everyone. Welcome to Bush Stadium in St. Louis. It's a beautiful day for football. We've got 52 degrees, uh, not much of a breeze, so the kickers can relax and just worry about the hold. And I think we're going to have a good football game here. Only 37,000 showed up in the stadium. It seats 51,000, but we did show up. I'm Tom Brookshire, and Charlie Waters, my friend here, uh, used to come into this stadium with the Dallas Cowboys. He played with them for a dozen years. Uh, let's talk about the Hex. Uh, Bud Grant's team is 2-5. and five against these St. Louis Cardinals. Is there such a thing as a hex in Pro Bowl? Well, I'm sure it doesn't mean anything to Minnesota team, but to the St. Louis Cardinal team, I'm sure they're paying attention to it. They've won the last three outings against Minnesota. Vikings are being very careful. They, are they a team that's for real? Well, I don't know, Brookie. They've, they're five and two, or six and two. This is their best start since 1976. They're not killing anybody. They've won two games in overtime, but the thing that they're real good at is they have depth at key positions. Their quarterback position is real good, and their offensive line is, is real strong at their depth position. Now, the other thing is they're getting turnovers, a lot yeah. of turnovers and a lot of sacks. They're number one in the NFL, a plus 17 on that giveaway takeaway thing. On the other side, the St. Louis Cardinals have a lot of talent. Anderson will be back running, but they just have found ways to lose games and dribble it around. It's incredible. Boy, it's amazing. Just like you said at the top of the show, they are finding all kind of ways to lose ball games. 38% of the points that they've given up this year is directly caused because of turnovers. Today, they can't turn the ball over going against the number one team in the league as far as interceptions goes. The other thing is when they get it in scoring position, they've got to be able to kick the field goal. Donahue's coming back from a bad game on Monday night. Stop the run against Minnesota, pressure them into a passing situation, put pressure on deals, maybe St. Louis can get some turnovers. And, of course, the man you spoke of, Neil O'Donoghue, who was, he was now infamous, really, for missing three field goals in overtime is going to kick off, and the Cardinals can really cover kicks. They're about the best in the league. They've held people to under a 20-yard return. There's O'Donoghue, you see. Jarvis Redwine, the former Nebraska Cornhusker, and Darren Nelson, the young man that was the number one draft a year ago, back to return. Here we go. Cardinals will be on defense. It's a low kick. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It's taken by number 56 for the Vikes. That is Huffman. The big Notre Damer came up the middle with it, probably his first return in pro football, and I imagine Bud Grant uh, will make sure that that's his only return in pro football. <laughs> the defense now for St. Louis is a twisting group, and they are tough. Here's the offense, and it's a good one. Dills is in there at quarterback. Ted Brown, when he's healthy, they're a different football team. Darren Nelson now really making people realize he's a number one pick. Sammy White, Sam McCullum, two veteran receivers and good ones. Riley, Huff, Swilly, Hamilton, Irwin, they are big and they can pass block. And Dave Casper weighs 240 and tied in. Dills, short drop, flags are down, and he overthrows into the Viking bench. A flag on the first play. Dills pass for number 84, Sam McCullum. Pat Haggerty is the referee. Flag down. Illegal formation. Looked like Casper was supposed to be up on the line, and perhaps the tight end fudged a bit. This is the defense for St. Louis. Bubba Baker, Galloway, who's become a good pass rusher. Elo Grooms, who's still limping a little bit, but an excellent man working in there. Charlie Baker, EJ Jr. inside. He had 12 tackles on Monday night against the Giants. And Bob Harris, the secondary man who's becoming a very good weak side linebacker. Washington in there as a the starter. Wayne Smith and Nelson and Benny Perrin. They lead the team in tackles, and that is not good. They're second in the NFC defensively. They've got a strong defensive team and had a great outing Mon Sunday, well, Monday night defensively. Now we have a crazy formation now with two remaining backs. That's Casper in motion, and they run back inside. Nelson gets hit hard at the 34-yard line. He only weighs 180 pounds, and Elo Grooms nailed it. Elo goes 255. St. Louis needs to stop the running game, as we said at the top of the show, to force Minnesota into a passing situation because the strength of this Minnesota defensive team is a pass rush. They've got that strong, stunning type attack. And it's pressure on that quarterback there. The numbers on Steve Dills. Remember, three of those INTs came against Dallas when they went nickel on him. Like, Here comes the blitz. Dills throwing now, sidearming, and gets the completion to Casper, but it's going to be short of the first down, I believe. Still a real good safe throw. He's thrown 83 now, 83 passes without an interception, and he just will not force the ball. Minnesota just does not want to give the ball away early in the ball game. The kicking game for the Vikings, very solid, with Ricardo, of course, on the field goals, and this young man, Greg Coleman. Averaging 40.8, and he's a very smart, good athlete. He's also trying to get into television. I don't know if that means he's smart or not. <laughs> Stump 
Mitchell back, of course, along with uh, Harold and Farrell. Sounds like a comedy team. Out of bounds, it will be spotted somewhere around the 17-yard line. And so the Cardinal defense has held, and the crowd is very, very quiet. It's, it's like they're non-existent. There's more empty seats here than there are people sitting. Looks to me like. we got a guy across the, from the stadium that's trying to, he's a human fly. They call him Blue Fly, and he's climbing that building, the equitable building over there. They had more people out watching him on the street than we probably got in the stadium right now. <laughs> he's almost to the top now, and we'll show you that shot maybe later on when we get a chance to. There he is. He's got suction cups, and the cops are waiting to give him a violation of some sort when it gets to the top. But we're told he has a parachute, and he's going to bail into the street. St. Louis fans are out there booing him. <laughs> it's tough when you're losing. Two, five, and one. They played 75 minutes on Monday night, and the Giants staggered back to the, the Meadowlands, and the Cardinals didn't get a win either. They had a million chances to win it. I thought New York was trying to roll over and almost let them have the game in the fourth quarter. You know, that, that there was a lot of negative publicity about the teams. Neither team really deserving to win. You can't just say that, Rookie. Those guys out there playing that game are playing hard, and they played a hard game uh, Monday night, especially their, the Cardinals' defensive team. Really strong, aggressive game. All right, Lomax is number 15. We'll set that offensive and defensive lineup. In just a moment. There's the eye. Anderson is number 32. He's the big man. Lomax, three-step drop and court to the outside and overthrows Tilly at the 30-yard line. Willie Neal Keel was right there, and this secondary for the Vikings has come up with a lot of interceptions this year. 19 this year for them, and they're number one in the, in the NFL. Here's the offense. Lomax, Wayne Morris, a good-blocking fullback. Otis Anderson, Roy Green, and Tilly, excellent receivers. Excellent speed and, and great pattern runners there. The offensive line, it's been different, but right now this is the way it shapes up. Lewis Sharp, Terry Steve is back. Randy Clark at center. Audick is in there in place of Boston. That hurts him. And, of course, Tootie Robinson right tackle. The tight end is Marsh. First start for Audick. The draw play. Anderson gets a hole. And that will slow down your pass rush. Charlie Johnson, the nose tackle, made the tackle. But after the big fella got seven yards. First game that O.J. has missed. Uh, he missed a game last week. This He's back in the lineup. Minnesota defense, they are no longer a finesse defense. They come at you. Doug Martin, Charlie Johnson, of course, on the early downs, the running downs, and Elshire. Martin and Elshire have uh, eight sacks between them. Well, that's 16 between the two of them. Linebackers, and we'll get that secondary in just a moment. Flashed right by them. Third down, and call it three. Lomax in the shotgun. Inside handoff. Number 39, Willie Harrell. Short of the first down. Pretty good looking play inside. Here are those linebackers. This used to be the strength of the defense. I personally think the defensive line is now. But Blair, Studwell, Dennis Johnson, and McNeil, they've played a lot together. Studwell's the leading tackler in the middle there. And Birdsong, the most effective punter in football, is back. Staying on the 10 yard line. Rufus Bess is back to accept for the Vikings. Birdsong's got the highest gross average and also the highest net average in the NFL. And these Cardinals cover kicks very well. The special team play has been excellent. Rufus Bess at the 24 fair catches. And so we have sort of parried back and forth. Two offensive series, no blood, no score. And we'll be back in just a moment. There's Bud Grant, no score. There's old Archie Manning right in there. He'll help. Check the numbers on Bud Grant. If the Vikings would win 150 wins, would put him third among active coaches. Uh, a year old coach, uh, Tom Landry's one, and Mr. Shula's number two. Right? They've got a good running competition as far as active coaches in the NFL. He's amazing coach. Look, he's got short sleeve shirts. I'm freezing up here, and he's got on a little short sleeve shirt. Uh, he likes to be outside. They're indoors up in Minnesota now. That hurts him. There's Jim Hannafin, one of the great likable people around. He'll pull that headset to the nth degree. He gets pretty upset. Dills, long time to throw it. Gets it in the flat. A good catch by Brown. Ted Brown makes a spinning catch and goes to the 29. 
couple of years ago in 81, he caught 83 passes. 83 passes, and he had 1,000 yards on the ground that same year. What a, what a durable back, and what an all-purpose type back. This is the perfect example of the type of backs that Bud Grant likes to have in his backfield. They had the Eagles beaten in a playoff game a few years ago until he got hurt and left the game, and the whole thing went upside down. He is one of the real, and he's a much sturdier person than he was. Oh, yeah, and he's very, very thick, very thick man. Here's the draw play, late one by Darren Nelson. About to the line of scrimmage, Curtis Greer chasing him down there. Darren Nelson is the perfect product for an indoor fast track facility like they have up in Minneapolis. Don't you think he's going to be a player of the future? Moment? Yeah, I like I like his size. Uh, he's got that. His gyroscope is low to the ground. His gyroscope. Yeah, well, the little the little center of balance, you know, where he can move around. The little guy's got that quick movement, and uh, it's, we'll get back to that later about how he's drafted here at uh, Minnesota and how he's fitting into this program. They took him in front of Marcus Allen. I still think it's going to turn out to be a good one. Quick pass caught by Brown, and the first down. The first first down is by the Vikings. Bob Harris getting a ride there. Brown at 179 yards on 29 carries against Green Bay. And they said that uh, Murdy's and the different coaches put in 15 new running plays, and they worked very hard the week before Green Bay just so they knew they could run the ball better. The uh, St. Louis defensive team has got to tune into that running game. They, they've got to because they had such Minnesota had such success last week. First and ten. And that stops the twisting and stunning defense if you run at them a little bit, too. Oh, it's a pass, though. Everybody's out of the backfield. Good protection for Dills that he intercepted. At the 47-yard line, Lionel Washington comes up with it and takes the ball with him. Intended for Sammy White. The ball was thrown a high and away. Beautiful play. One of the things that Dills does not want to do, does not, has not thrown an interception in almost 90 passes. You see the blitz, EJ Jr., 54, coming in there and pressuring Dills. He waits too late to deliver this ball. It's a good close and a good recovery by Lionel Washington. This is his first start at corner, replacing Ray Griffin, who had an injured arm last week. They And they had Cedric Mack in there, but now they have Lionel Washington. He gets the first turnover in the ball game, and Jim Hart is not happy. tough news of last week. I, I know it's been difficult for all of us, but Blue Fly up there has just unveiled a big American flag. And we'd like for you to sit at home and sort of escape, if you would, from the realities of, of things that are happening around the globe and just enjoy a game. And it's simply a damn football game as far as I'm concerned. And we wish everybody the best. How about Blue Fly with that flag up there? Inside we thought it was a parachute. That's it. He's going to get arrested as soon as he gets to the top. He may pay his fine. CBS ought to pay his fine. That's Morris coming up the middle. Studwell making the tackle, but Morris picked up seven yards. Boy, he's a reliable back for them, a great blocking back, but you don't hear too much about his, his running average. He averages 3.6 a carry, and he, he rarely fumbles. He hasn't fumbled the ball in almost 500 carries and won't visit with the press because he's afraid it might jinx him in the fumbling the ball. <laughs> That's right. I mean, they're not superstitious, are they? You mean the press? <laughs> the press. Second down and three. Good play by Morris. Lomax now in Viking territory. Drive to Anderson, number 32. Oh, he's some back. When he's healthy, he's as good as any of them. The 36. Willie Teal from the secondary to make that tackle. 222 pounds, and he sort of roller skates at you. He's tough to tackle. Boy, he's a strong back. And you see him run right through the tackle here of uh, Duck White, 72. Trying to string, just runs right through him. And Duck White's a big, strong man. You know, and he's under a lot of criticism here in, in St. Louis. OJ said he's not running hard. And I'll tell you, that's running hard right there. And Stump Mitchell is his backup. And Anderson, he is Mr. Explosion, though. There's the drive pass action play. Lomax on the outside to Marsh. Finally forced out of bounds at around the 16-yard line. Turner and Teal sort of stood back like they couldn't believe it. Here's another one guy that doesn't talk to the press. Is that right? Yeah, he had a couple of touchdowns against Tampa Bay a couple of weeks ago and still wouldn't talk. When your big back is getting ground, getting yards on the ground, you can run a play action pass and try to hold the linebackers, and that's what they did there, and they cleared the route for Marsh coming across the field. 
Doug Marsh is having a good year. They're throwing more to the tight end, and I believe you've got to throw the tight end in the 80s. You've said that all along, and it's certainly the truth. It sure takes that double coverage off your outside receiver. Every time. A first down play now as the Cardinals drive deep early in this first period. The toss back to Anderson, cuts inside, makes a move, and gets inside the 10 to about the 7. Turner making another tackle. Cardinals up front are blocking that bunch pretty well. And you feel very confident running against a three-man front. It's amazing how well they've done in the years past running against a three-man front. They, they, feel, they feel like they can move the ball on the ground. They were planning on running it to the left, although that play there was run to the right. They feel like they have a strength on the left side of the line with Sharp and Steve against 72 White. And the man in the middle right there, number 65, Charlie Johnson, was the all-pro with Philadelphia that decided to go up and play for Bud Grant, and he is a very good nose tackle. Sets a great example for their team. Second down and six. Lomax dancing now, beginning to move out. He has a lot of time. Touchdown. Pat Tilly. third touchdown by Tilly, the eighth by Lomax, and I thought the crowd was painted. That's the first animation we've had of Yes, yeah, sir, that was good. And you see Lomax, Lomax is looking left. It's credit the offensive line, protecting and a lot of poise in the pocket by Lomax. And he rifles that ball in there. Nice play. 19 for 19 is Neil O'Donohue on extra points. It looked like somebody got a hand on it, but it still made it over, and the crowd cheers again. You'll take them any way you can get them, right? Lomax to Tilly and O'Donohue kick the extra point. 7 0. 52 yards in five plays. A big touchdown. 8.38 left in the first period. And of course, the interception by the young cornerback, Washington, set it all up. That's a turn of events for St. Louis to get a turnover and take it down and score. They've had that going against, against, against them so many times this year. Boy, you're right. Jarvis Redwine and Darren Nelson back. O'Donohue now kicking another squib kick to make sure Nelson doesn't bring it back. Taken by Ricky Young at the 30-yard line and tackled immediately. Well, that's an interesting strategy that they're doing right there, Brooke. They, we saw them against Tampa Bay after they scored the first field goal. They come out and they try an onside kick. You know, a desperate team does desperate things sometimes. And maybe, you know, are they going for an onside kick or are they just trying to squib it away from... I think they're afraid Darren Nelson might take 199 on them, and I suppose that's that's a good thought. But St. Louis has got a good coverage team. The best. Under 19 yards a shot, that's about as good as you can cover it. You bet. And nobody wants to play on those teams, but these guys are making an art out of it. First and 10 for Steve Dills in the offense. Nelson moves in motion, and Brown gets inside, maybe two and a half, three yards. Grooms is there. One of the theories, I guess, when a team stunts a lot, by that I mean they move, change positions on defense, is to run straight at it sometimes like that? You can pop it through, but sometimes when you, it, it can happen good for you, and sometimes it can happen bad for you. If they're stunting in the direction you're trying to run, they're going to get killed right at the line of scrimmage. The Giants. Oh, my goodness. Uh, at the Meadowlands, 7 nothing on Dallas. That game is not over, however. Dallas the first quarter. They won them, huh? Yeah, down, that's down, right, yeah. down by seven. Five-step drop by Dills. Outside, caught, and then fumbled out of bounds, and they're going to call it good. No, oh, they're going to call it. Oh. Washington belted the receiver, McCollum, and they're going to call it a completion. I thought he had control of it before he got belted out of bounds, didn't you? Oh, they, they call it an incompletion, yeah. yeah. Boy, I thought he had control, too. Sam McCullum went to Seattle and came back. And he runs good patterns. He runs good routes, and he's playing today because of LeCount is injured with an ankle injury. Let's see if he does snag it. He looks like he has it there. One, well, two feet in bounds, but he was being hit by the defender. That's right. Would he have had? Would he have come down well, in bounds if he hadn't have been hit? It's a judgment call. You got to go ahead and give it to him. You got to say he's in bounds. But the referees did not. And it's yeah, third. And you're down. next defensive back too, huh? That's right. Third down and eight. Sure looked good to me. Brown's in motion, and Dills is under attack. The blitz got him. He fumbles the football. I believe Ricky Young came up with the football, but Curtis Greer knifed through from the right defensive end spot, and the blitz was on. Harris came to number 50 on that. They're, they're still scrambling. People are pulling out their switchblades down there in that pile. 
big heat by the big red defense, and they can put a darn pass rush on you. Sam McCullum, pardon me, number 84, was the one on the bottom of the pile. They had the blitz on, and you can see Bob Harris, 50, coming in there. He's the first one that flushes him. And the fumble was caused by Groom, 78. Coleman back for the second putt today. I tell you, St. Louis's defense is strong. They look like they're hot on offense, too. This may be a St. Louis day. Here's a good spiraling kick. Taken by Farrell. Farrell gets a hole and gets the midfield. And the crowd suddenly warms to their St. Louis team. There are no boos here right now. A 7-0 lead, and the defense is playing tough. Wow, the sun is shining in St. Louis. Hey, O.J., I know people go to Hertz for terrific service. But off the record, where do you go for a terrific price? Hertz? Come on, you can level with me. Arnie, Hertz prices are lower than you think. And now with their new low daily economy fares, their prices are competitive with anybody's. Anybody's? You got it, Arnie. <laughs> I wish I could say the same for you, O.J. Hertz, the number one way to rent a car. In Olympic bobsledding, our lives depend on our equipment. She's got to hold together under more G-forces than a space shot. The whole team pitches in, but it's coming down the run. The sled's all we've got. The Olympics take teamwork, and Budweiser is proud to be part of that team. This Bud's for you. Wednesday, this reporter takes pictures of a crooked senator and a world-class embezzler. And now he's dead. And Farley and Jeremy are next on the hit list. Whiz Kids, Wednesday. This punt return right here, you see Earl Farrell is going to catch the ball. On the right-hand side of your screen, you're going to see number 30, Stump Mitchell, coming in the screen. And he gets the key block right here and then frees Farrell. You're not going to see this in the stat book. 17-yard wow. return, but it was caused because of a block right there by Stump Mitchell. Special team play. Farrell's first return of the season, and a good one, 17 yards. First time we've seen twin safeties back. There's Stump Mitchell. He can play for you. Whatever position you ask him to play, he'd do a good job, whether it was guard or what. Likes to play at the 49-yard line, call it. Three-step quick drop by Lomax out to Roy Green. Green to the 45-yard line. John Turner stopping him there. Green at 100 yards where the catch is against the Giants on Monday night. He has tremendous speed and is beginning to act more like a receiver than he is a defensive back. Yeah, Emmett Thomas says, hey, I know he's, a, know he's turned into a receiver when he gets in the huddle and tells the quarterback, I'm, hey, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open on every play. And that's the way receivers think. They think they're open all the time. Of course, they're always calling for it. Second down and five at the 45. Cardinals look like they've got themselves together. Toss back to Anderson. Anderson. Stacked up at the 43. Good defensive pursuit by the Vikings. Charlie Johnson coming all the way out from nose tackle. Anderson slow getting up. Yeah, but those good backs are always slow at getting up, Brooke. And they pop out of that stance the next time, run right over him. And we got him now. Look at him. He's limping back to the huddle. And they just burst for 100 yards. <laughs> the only, only fellow that has more yardage than he does is Walter Payton over the last five years. That's right. right. In this division, NFC. I think Earl Campbell might have a couple more from the other side. A great running back. And the Cardinals are having a tough year. 2-5-1. and one. They need something at home. Marsh is in motion. The tight end. Lomax. Now he's pumping. Now he's going deep. He's got an open receiver, Marsh. Marsh is tackled at the four. The motion man open as he cut up field, and Lomax had a lot of time to pick him out. Boy, I like the way Lomax is doing things. He's reading well. The safeties are kicking back in both sides of the field. He's looking right, and he's, he reads the coverage. He wants to go that way, and then he sees Marsh down the middle. A lot of time to throw the ball and a great read by Lomax. Now see, there's, there's no, that safety coming in right there, Turner. He's been, his responsibility is for the deep half to the outside. And you see Lomax look him off and then come back to Marsh down the middle. A 38 yarder to the tight end. The longest catch for Marsh this season. And a big one. Handoff to Stump Mitchell. Stump inside. 
John Mitchell. Pesca. Wow. Look at this. As Coach Marion Campbell said, he runs downhill at you. Yeah, when he gets the ball, he's moving at full speed, they say. Little pull and play to the outside. You'll see Steve, 68, he makes a key block. You can't see him on the play, but watch this second effort by Stump Mitchell. He's down, he scrambles. Oh boy, he's got a big heart. He wants to get to that end zone. Four out of five on that drive for a low max, and O'Donoghue has made two in a row. 513 left in the first period. A shocker. It's not over though. St. Louis leads Minnesota 14 to nothing. Nearly four hours. That's how long it took us to paint this room with a roller. Then we painted it in less than one hour with the new Wagner Power Roller. A living room that took nearly seven hours. The Wagner Power Roller finished in less than three. The Power Roller pumps paint straight from the can to the roller or to any of several optional accessories. Why waste your time painting a pan when you could be painting your walls instead? The Wagner Power Roller, the right tool for painting. For the past two years, I've been telling you, with uh, some interruptions, that an independent test for best color picture, the Sylvania Superset beat RCA, Zenith, and Sony. Well, this year, we again asked over a thousand people which TV had the best overall color picture. And uh, more of them picked the 19-inch Sylvania Superset over RCA and Zenith and Sony, too. Sylvania beats Sony again? A reminder, CBS Sports Saturday returns November the 12th with an exciting show. You'll see the reigning figure skating champions, including Scotty Hamilton and Rosalind Sutters, give special uh, freestyle performances. And athletes from seven countries compete in events which combine dance and gymnastics at the World Cup Gymnastics Championships. And John Madden explores how several former NFL players are coping with physical problems caused by football. I don't know why he didn't interview us. It's all here, <laughs> November the 12th on CBS Sports Saturday. Somebody told me one time that when I played, nobody hit anybody. And I said, how come I limp all the time when I walk there? <laughs> Four plays, a tremendous drive there by the St. Louis Cardinals. And as you mentioned, the turnover thing could be the bugaboo for Minnesota today. Huh? A low kick by O'Donoghue. Huffman back to Ricky Young. Ricky Young up over the 33-yard line. Smith made the tackle. This time, Huffman decided to run the option play instead of carrying it himself. <laughs> you know, this is a, what a reversal. St. Louis, as we said earlier, they, they've given up 38% of their points because of turnovers, and they're second in the league as far as return. I see now uh, fumbles in and interceptions returned for touchdowns. They are th the worst in the league behind Tampa Bay. And here Minnesota's reversed the roles, and they've thrown. They've given up good field position and had short drives for St. Louis. Bills heading off to Darren Nelson. Darren Nelson, a real hurry. Great tackle. Great tackle by E.J. Jr. coming from the middle linebacking spot. Of course, E.J. Jr. has moved into the middle. He was an outside linebacker, and the, the emergence of Bob Harris on the outside, number 50, is the reason why E.J. Jr. can play in the middle. Boy, he had a great game last week with 12 tackles against New York. Why have the Cardinals given up the top number of points in the league, though? They've given up, what, 238. That's, that's a lot of points in eight games. Well, it's maybe the offense is it's the it's return yards with the interceptions and the fumbles is what causes that statistic to be off balance. And where they happen sometimes. Dills to Darren Nelson. Nelson getting good blocks. Darren Nelson slides to midfield. Lionel Washington tripped him up, but Nelson almost went coast to coast. That's that all type of tight back that we're talking about that Minnesota loves to have. They passed up Marcus Allen so they could get this guy right here, number 20, Darren hurt, Nelson. And he was hurt a lot last year in all fairness. He got sprains and different things. Oh, yeah, it, it was a strange year. And, he, of course, he, did, he doesn't really like that area up there. He said and it's a lot different than California. He likes it now, though. You yeah. can buy sunshine. You can go away in January if you want to. Late January. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. These Vikings have been to four Super Bowls. You can't do that without being with the right program. Here comes Brown on a misdirection play that fools nobody. The Cardinals are swarming. A loss of two. 
CJ Jr. in there again, and Charlie Baker. That's that counter play that Minnesota loves to run so much. That counter play really doesn't mean anything when you're 14 points down there. You're not going to really pay attention to taking a false step in one direction and coming back in the other. 52 right there, Charlie Baker played the, the pulling guard well, strung the play out, and, and caused, the, caused the sack. You're looking at that Bubba Baker, number 60. They'll put a tight end outside of him a little bit to block him from the outside and perhaps cool him off because he's a great pass rusher. Obtained from Detroit. Here he comes, and here goes Dills back to throw. The blitz is on, and they've got it. Good pass rush by Galloway. Galloway came right up the middle, and Dills went down. Force him into a pass situation. I tell you, this team is a strong defensive team, second in the NFC and th third against the pass. You see 50, Bob Harris coming in on the blitz. That leaves it. Dave Galloway one-on-one, -on -one, and boy, he sacks. Dills, no time to throw it. Big sack. And right now the Vikes are having a lot of trouble on offense. 2.37 left in the first period. The second sack registered by the Cardinals, and they're coming again. It's third and a lot. Third and 20. The screen pass out in the flat. That's Brown. Back to midfield, about where they started, and Galloway making a good tackle, chasing the play down from behind, and Brown's hurt. He's had knee problems before. From North Carolina State, a number one draft. When he's healthy, the Vikings are a team to be worried about. He's tough. Look at him, wears those high top shoes. It's funny that, a, that an elusive type running back, where well, he's a strong running back too, to, to wear those high top shoes. It takes stress off the ankle and transfers it to the knee. This is just an extra support for the ankle to wear that high top shoe. This is not a good playing surface. They've got the baseball diamond in here and their big grooves in the rug. Now you're kind to this surface to say it's not. It's, this is a poor surface. It's this really is, bad. This is the worst surface in the NFL. Well, that sort of clarifies it right there, doesn't it? And some of those edges, they don't look that bad, but you know, you can actually turn a, an ankle or even foul up a knee just by stepping in the groove, you know? Oh, it's, it's uh, the part that's a lighter color is, is the turf is laid down. As they carry Ted Brown off the field, the turf is laid down where the, it's not setting up, and then that new green turf, the bright color turf, the, the bristles are sitting up, and this makes a difference. Plus, there's, a, there's almost an inch or two difference in the height. Coleman's coming in the punt. There's some areas out there where there are big roofing nails, too, where they patched it. Oh, You've seen them out there. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's Farrell. professional football, though, Brookie. You gotta Farrell play. and Harrell and Mitchell, and here comes Coleman's kick. Heading for the corner, and out of bounds at the one foot line. Oh, they're oh. call it a touchback. Oh. And that official did not have a good angle on oh. This is one of the great punts you've seen all year. We were looking right at it from here. And Coleman, well, of course, he's flat sure that it was. A 50-yard kick is going to come out to the 20. You're right, number eight, you were robbed. He's had 15 of them dropped within the 20-yard line. Only There's only about two other punters in the league that are better than him, and Birdsong being one of them. Birdsong's got 20 that's dropped inside the 20, but I'll tell you, Jim Hennepin, he got a break right there. That ball's on the 20-yard line. It should be on the one. Jim Hannafin. Uh, an assistant coach for years and years, and he's gotten his chances in his fourth season here, and he took this Cardinal bunch to the playoff last year, even the strike and all. Lomax rush, but gets off a deep one, and he throws it away from Tilly, who really wasn't open anyway. Turner would have had a pretty good shot at the receiver if the ball had been near him. Yeah, but you know what I like about that, Brookie, is that they threw the ball deep early in the ball game. They haven't been doing it. We've seen St. Louis three or four times this year, and they just don't throw the ball deep early in the ball game to get those cornerbacks paying attention to that deep route. Now, Tilly did have Willie Till beat there just enough, but it had to be a pinpoint pass, but it doesn't matter. Now you got that set cornerback playing a little looser. It looked like Lomax had a lot of pressure just as he released the ball. He's four of six for 76 and a touchdown. And his arm is well. Looks sharp today. Second down 10. The drive, power, outside run by Anderson who gets outside. Anderson is dragging people to the 35-yard line. He's an earth mover. A first down in the crowd awakens again. 
Now, Minnesota does not take their strong safety and put it on the strong side of the line of scrimmage. And you see 68, Terry Steve is pulling to the outside. And he hooks 27, Willie Teal in. Now, you're at, they're asking Willie Teal, a cornerback, to turn that play in. And that's why Otis Anderson gets to the outside. Boy, what a block by Steve. That's a hard angle to get from inside guard and, position. And he hooks him. He hooks him to the inside and close on him. Makes that alley open to the outside. Of course, now with the running game going, and you can see the numbers for Anderson already, the play action passes should work pretty well. It's a first and ten. St. Louis doesn't need to be conservative, but then again, they don't need to be turning the ball over to him. Timeout is called as Lomax goes over to have a slight discussion with Hannafin and Time Jameson. St. Louis, number one. Boy, how would you like to have this recorded? Jameson is the man on the right in the orange when he sets up the offensive patterns and calls the signals out. But Hannafin's checking it anyway, isn't he? This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. That's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. These two teams met in the first preseason game at Wembley Stadium in England. And, and the Vikings flew their own plane over instead of taking the one that was offered by the promoter. And because of that, uh, the promoter won't give them the trophy because the Vikings beat the Cardinals in that game. And... They wanted to take the wives along with the players. I think it was a great idea, and the Vikings have always been very classy in the way they treat the families of the players, and I think taking them to England was a good idea. There's Johnny Michaels, the offensive line coach, an old teammate of mine. He's got a bunch of big guys on that front for the offense, huh? Yeah, they allow a lot of depth in that offensive line with Minnesota. But right now, it's the defense being tested for Minnesota. First and 10, call it the 36th. Misdirection play, Anderson dances. Gets almost to the 40-yard line, and people fall on top of the running back. Charlie Johnson, McNeil there. You saw the last shot on the sideline. You saw two Minnesota players coming on the field, two defensive linemen. They have three starters when they play the three-man front. Dallas ties the score up with New York. They're 7-7. Seven seven. But they actually play six guys in that line. Six guys are they're, they're token starters, really, because they have a lot of guys playing. Tampa Bay leading Pittsburgh. Detroit, wow, hanging it on. Mike Ditka and the Chicago Bears. Buffalo over New Orleans, 7-0. Not at halftime yet. Second half of the season. Eight are gone, eight are left. Lomax, a lot of time, dumps it to Anderson, who has a blocker in front. Ah, uh, good pursuit by the Vikes. Holding to two or three yards. As Rufus Best came up, made a real good tackle. That looked like, that looked like it was scheduled for some yardage. Yes, good sir. defensive play. Real good defensive play by Beth. Blair is hopping off, but he'll be back. He has been for years. The end of the first quarter. The score, St. Louis 14, Minnesota nothing. And the Cardinals can't believe it. They're being cheered at home. Behind the stadium, the arch, the gateway to the west, they call St. Louis. Tom Brookshire with Charlie Waters. St. Louis, Minnesota, and number 72 is Dan Deardorff, the giant one. He covers the 35, the 40, and the 45. <laughs> what a great, great player for, for 12 years here at St. Louis. Announced his retirement last week. and An all-pro and a class, class person. That's for sure. He said he knew he would know when to quit, and this was the year after a dozen. The quick drop. Lomax very wisely does not try the screen, and now is going to run with it himself and gets to the 45-yard line. Holloway chased him down from behind. Lomax very wisely didn't dump it in the flat on the screen. Yes, sir. Good move by Lomax. Like it what I'm seeing as far as him reading. That was third and three, and they're checking out the, the line right there to see if he sneaked over for the first. Didn't he have seven touchdown passes in one college game at Portland State? Seven. It was seven and one half. Oh, come on. No, we asked him. Seven and one half. He threw it for over 13,000 yards in college. You think they were trying to run the score up on somebody? How do you get seven touchdown passes? <laughs> he said the reserve guy got five in the second half. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up now. That, that's savage. Birdsong standing on the 30-yard line. They were short by a foot. Vikings not having a good first period. Let's see if they block. They got to block it. Birdsong gets away and drills a great punt. Ball bouncing at the 12-yard line. A 
tremendous play by number 18. You talk about the count of Monte Cristo. He was dodging and then kicking. Boy, he has really got a, a great reputation, and it's warranted. This guy is leading the league. Now, this is Minnesota. And now it's blocked. Downfield, number 58 on the offense. Sin line is that linebacker there. And he has a chance. At 50, they've blocked 56 punts here, or they've blocked 56 kicks at Minnesota over the years. <laughs> Birdsong does a, a complete rollover. There's a flag on the play. An illegal receiver was downfield, and Pat Haggerty is trying to maintain control and doing a very good job of it, I might add. Those linemen are, are blocking in the... And when that, they, they block and they know that they can release in about three seconds is about the time the guy needs to get the punt off. Now remember, when he's moved around, he's become a runner, so you can rough him. Field, number 58, offense. You know what I mean? That's, why they, not, that's why they didn't call that. that. Once he moves and he becomes a, he's like a quarterback back there, he's fair game. Now, if you run past the line of scrimmage and then punted, then the, it wouldn't have mattered if the, the lineman would have been downfield. Well, I think they should be treated like players anyway, kickers and <laughs> Treated like players, huh? Birdsaw, back to kick again. Illegal man downfield. And the Cardinals do cover these kicks. This is an average kick for him. Being fair caught by Rufus Pass. But he gets away from the ball. And hey, St. Louis roll inside the 10. This is the crowd reaction. Wow, happiness is. Another flag is down. Holding by the receivers. Holding on Minnesota. I'm sure St. Louis will take this putt. A great roll inside the 10. And Minnesota will have to go 92 yards to get a touch. A 52-yard punt. Bud's not real happy about that. But Grant talking to Steve Dills. Uh, Minnesota mentioned that they've had 56 blocked kicks of some kind. Well, they blocked other people's, huh? They block a lot of different kind of kicks. Bowling, number 33. After the kick, most possession, first down. Matt All Blair right. has blocked. And the Minnesota offense settles in. They haven't gotten on the board yet. Atlanta now leading New England 10 to nothing. Tampa Bay, six to nothing over Pittsburgh. Might interview John McKay after all today. Fourteen to nothing, Buffalo over New Orleans. There, just about at halftime. Houston, wow, seven to three. It's been a long time since the Oilers have brought in a gusher, huh? Bills, long collie. Got to be careful. He's there's Darren Nelson out to the 10 yard line almost. EJ Jr. stacks him up there. And this is that possession thing, and they do lead the league in turnovers, the giveaway takeaway thing. They've got to run the ball against these guys. Let's look, take a shot at EJ Jr. That's 54 in the middle of the screen, the middle linebacker. His responsibility is to read, and everybody's supposed to keep blockers off of him. He plays off one blocker. He pursues down the end line of scrimmage, and he makes a tackle, but it's, what, after six yards, but still a pretty aggressive move by E.J. Jr. He's playing a lot more physical than he used to when he played the outside, too, you know? I think the inside might be a spot. Nelson. Like, excuse me, Brookie, he looks like a middle linebacker. He's bigger. He's a lot bigger person than, than, than an outside linebacker. And he's gotten his life straightened away. He sat out four games as the commissioner sat him down for an involvement in a dr drug situation, and we talked with him, and he said he's learned, and he's back, and... He wants to be a football player again. I, I think he's doing a great job at it. Third down and call it three. As this Cardinal defensive ball club is sort of maturing and growing up as Floyd Peters, their coach, says they're beginning to look like a team. Hills, he's got time. Nelson. Nelson to the 29. Tackle there by Lee Nelson. Nelson, Nelson. From Stanford, how many great football players have come out of Stanford? They never seem to, you know, go the Rose Bowl and all, but they've turned out a good quarterback every year since I can remember, and this young man caught everything thrown in that Pac-10 for years. He's got a good rapport with uh, Dills. They were, they were teammates together in college, and they've got a little chemistry going between them. They, they so, showed on that last play. Well, there's what Plunkett and Barilla came out of there. And, 
guy named Elway. A lot of great quarterbacks from the West Coast. And they run a pro type offense. Oh, he is really hit. Darren Nelson is met head on by EJ Jr. And you can hear it pop all the way up here in the booth. Give him a couple of yards. I like that, Brookie, that, that crashing. You know, that you, you get up here in the booth and you sit up in the stands and you forget that that's a war out there. I don't care if your team is 0-12 going against a 12-0 team. You're going to blast into each other and there's going to be, I mean, those noises, that hurts too when they make big noises like that. It sounds a lot different when you're in the helmet than when you just hear it on television. It feels better too up here. Second down at five. Dills from the eye. Play action. He's being rushed. He gets rushed, but he gets it off to Casper. And the big fella drags into St. Louis territory. And he takes Lee Nelson with him. What an acquisition to pick up Archie Manning and Casper before the season from Houston for a second and fourth round draft choice. Oh. Those two people can help him. What a coup. Play action pass. And St. Louis is having a blitz. Minnesota's line picks it up well. And a good poise by Dills to find Casper in the flat. No way you can cover him man-to-man -man on a blitz when you have that much time to throw. There's the big fella. He's cut his hair and everything. When he's in college. He had it shaved ball. Notre Dame, now he has it real long, but he trimmed it down just to make Bud Grant happy. He didn't have to. Nelson, outside. He got a good block. Now he's spun around. Hit hard. Good recovery by the Cardinals. E.J. Jr. in on another tackle. And that is a big offensive line that the Vikings have. It, it's got to average around 270. Swilly's the little one in the middle at about 248. Bubba Baker, 60 right there, is at the point of attack. Let's see how they handle him on this play to the outside. He's getting double teamed, which you, most of your good defensive linemen do, but that's good containment right there, good pursuit by E.J. Jr. I tell you, the personality of this St. Louis, St. Louis defensive team is strong right now. They're aggressive. And I'll tell you, E.J. in the middle is a different football player. He can get to both sides of the field, and he's very, very fast. Second down and 10, Dills. He dumps it over to Nelson. Nelson gets a little shielding block by Casper and gets the first down. Nelson making another tackle on Nelson. You can hear the contact then. I tell you, every time you tackle Darren, you get the helmet. The little guy we mentioned about, uh, <laughs> about that gyroscope, you know, that was a good example of what I was talking about, Brooke. He catches the ball and he wheel, spins back to the outside. And with that little extra effort, that little ability to, to make that adjustment without losing his balance, got him the first down. I know Max Winter and those people out in Minnesota, they'll, they'll bring heat lamps in. If he wants more sunshine in <laughs> Minneapolis, they'll bring it in for him. You can order it. First down and 10. Dills quickly back now. Being rushed. Gets the pass off. Good catch. Sam McCullum on the inside hook sort of died in there and made a good catch in front of Wayne Smith. This is a pretty good poise right here by Dills, who has not thrown the ball very well so far today. There is a penalty on the play as we see the replay. See Bob Harris is sucked out to the outside. Good Ooh. timing on the route. They roughed the passer. I believe that somebody came in there late. I believe Harris hit the, hit Dills late. That's what it is. Very popular decision here in St. Louis. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 60. Defense. First down. Correction. Bubba Baker, number 60. And he is known for hitting the quarterback a trifle late. In fact, he makes a... He made a career of it. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Not if you have to line up and play all game. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside move. Nelson looking for a block. Good tackle by Harris from behind. Pick up of a couple of yards. You can see the philosophy that St. Louis has. You saw all the guys, even at home, you could see all the guys getting up on the line of scrimmage and blitzing. They're just going to, there's, there's no use to play soft anymore. Let's get after it. Let's make something happen. You see him. Did, did you guys hold hands hold in hand? Dallas? Are you kidding? There's Floyd Peters, the defensive strategist. He also came down from Detroit a year ago, and he's the assistant head coach. He's more than just a defensive coach. He's in control of that defense. Second down and nine. Dills. Knocked away. Knocked away by Lee Nelson. Intended for number 82, Brewer. He looked open for a minute. 
Nice recovery on Lee Nelson's part. That, that, when you get close to the goal line, you can make a close. But let's see how they're protecting Dells. Protecting, keeping Baker off of Dells. <laughs> I tell you, it's a war down there. <laughs> how do they do it play after play? If it wasn't for the huddle, it'd be a fight every, every play. You know that? They have to go back and cool off. The question is, why do they do it? Why, why do they do that? It's true. Third down. This is a big play in the ball game right here. Third down and nine. From the 11. Bills quickly throw a great catch. Great diving catch by Sammy White at about the two-yard line. And the ball was thrown just about the only place that White could have caught it. And it looked like it might be just enough for the first. It's been a real impressive but a drive by Minnesota. You know, they said the first game, look, we can't, turn, we can't turn the ball over the first game. We just haven't been doing very well coming from behind. The two games, the one game they lost to San Francisco, they just got killed. They had some turnovers at the first of the game. But they made the first. You covered Sammy White when you played with Dallas. What is he, overpoweringly fast, or what, what's the story with Sam? Oh, he's got it all. He's smooth. Uh, he's he's unassuming. He doesn't call it and doesn't make any waves. Now, he has had some drop passes. But, but I mean, what was he like when you covered him? Was he, how, is, does he run good patterns? Oh, yeah, very fluid. Uh, very fluid pass route runner. And also has the speed to get deep. And a great team player, as you said, Mr. Charlie Waters. Well done. Here we go. First and goal. Big play by Sammy White. They got the short yardage group in there. And Kent Brown is back in there. We were told that with the sprained ankle, we wouldn't see number 23 anymore. And he comes in. Ricky Young is in for the blocking, of course, number 34. Number 56, Dave Huffman, for you see him reporting to the referee right there. He has to report on every play because now he's a receiver, number 56. He weighs 270 pounds, and in the short yardage situation, that mini Minnesota or goal line situation, that Minnesota offensive line comes to over 2,000 pounds of meat. 2,000 pounds of beef. That's, hey. a, that's a that's a ton. You got a ton on both sides right now. Oh, scores a touchdown. A big move by the Vikings as they took it in. Good drive. Of course, assisted with a penalty here and there. Penetration right here by the offensive line pushes St. Louis back. But watch when Ted Brown hits in there. He's met face to face with Lee Nelson, and he just overpowers Nelson. Pow! Knocks him back. Boy, that's tough football. That's one to score. The eighth touchdown for Ted Brown this season. The team is six and two. They've won two in overtime. This team can play. Ricardo. Kicking it straight through. Suddenly it's a new football game. And the crowd is... But that is a good series, isn't it? Philadelphia, Dallas. No, it really is. I, I was really surprised that Dallas beat Philadelphia so bad two weeks ago. A lot of people were surprised. It'll be different up there in Philly, though. Randy Love and Farrell waiting for the kickoff by Ricardo. Picked up when... Dan Meyer went down with a bad back, and he has been some kicker this year. We'll cover his stats in a minute. That's Farrell. Farrell straightened up hard at the 25-yard line by Rick Bell. Vikings always a great special teams ball club. Bud Grant, that's interesting, Brook. Bud Grant says, hey, I judge a guy. If he shows me something on special teams, I know he's a guy I want to keep around. You know, most coaches don't have that philosophy. They go the other way. They get a guy that looks like they can play on defense or offense, and then they'll stick them on special teams. But Bud Grant's got a different philosophy. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment. You're looking at the Minnesota coach for 16 years. If you want it. I like it. If you really like it. I really like it. We can help you get it. We're GMAC. We want it. We're GMAC Financing. GMAC has helped more people buy their new GM car and truck than anyone with rates that make sense on models people want. All at your GM dealer. If you really want it, we can help you get it. We're GMAC Financing. We got it. From the land of sky blue waters, waters. From the land of pines, lucky blossoms, uh -oh. here comes the cheer refreshing. <laughs> 
The bear is taking off, and so will your party when you open up an ice cold ham. So for you light beer drinkers, ham special light. Happy landing! Ham's the beer refreshing. Ham's the beer refreshing. Ham's. Last season, Pittsburgh was undefeated at number one until they met Notre Dame. Now the Panthers want revenge, plus other regional games. NCAA football next Saturday on CBS Sports. Jim Anderson, the coach here in St. Louis, every time he sees Charlie Waters now, he says, oh, gosh, every time you guys do the game, we win, you know, like we're part of his team or something. But how about the other day when you asked him, uh, how you doing, coach? And he said, how you doing? I'll tell you how I'm doing. He said, you had to ask me that, huh? You had to ask me that after that Fumbles. Monday night game. I can't get a guy to kick a field goal from 17 yards away. Oh, the buck stops with that head coach, boy. I'll tell you, you take it home with you. Even in the offseason these days. Inside drive, Morris. The former SMU Mustang gets almost to the 30-yard line as Doug Martin straightens him up there. Now, this is a drive we need to focus in on as far as how the momentum is going in the ball game, Brookie, because Minnesota had a good, clean drive right then and moved it down and moved it within seven points. Now, if they can stop St. Louis, which they haven't done a very good job of doing, two times St. Louis has had the, four times they've had the ball and two times they've scored, the pressure's on that group right there. They're not really good statistically on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. They're 12th in the NFC against the rush. It's sort of surprising, isn't it? Of course, if you're going to be weak someplace, I'd like to see people run on me a little bit, wouldn't you? Here's the pass out in the flat. Roy Green with a blocker. In a hurry, gets to the 43-yard line. And I'll tell you, 81 can turn it on. He was supposed to run the 40 and 4 Two nine. I don't believe it. Well, he told us it was true, but that would be the fastest 40 other this side of Willie Gault. I've seen him run by me extremely fast. But watch, what I like <laughs> about this play is old Lomax. Watch how quickly he gets rid of this ball. All out blitz, gets rid of it, gets it out there, and he's got a lead blocker out there, Louis Sharp. If Louis Sharp could have blocked Willie Teal, big play. In a hurry, the speed on the outside of Roy Green. Number they call him Jetstream Green around here. He's a nice guy. And a, former great defensive back that has really become successful now. He's going to make some money playing off it. First down and 10. Quick drop. Lomax to Tilly. Steps out just into Minnesota territory. Teal was right there. Boy, that looks so easy, didn't it? A little quick step. Throw it out in the flat. Minnesota, the reason why it's so easy, that, that guy right there, Jim, what's his name? Not Jim Hart. Neil Lomax. Neil Lomax is reading the coverage. Freudian slip, right? <laughs> yeah, Freudian slip. But Jim Hart did that many, many times for many years at St. Louis. But this man now is in charge. What it, it does, though, is take the big pass rush yeah. away from the other team, doesn't it? It's such a quick drop, you can't get any pressure on it. Very frustrating on the defensive backs on that quick drop, that quick out route. And the Vikings are a good sack team, one of the best in football. But Lomax right now is in control. Second down and two. Here's the toss back to Anderson. It's close to the sticks, stacked up there by McNeil with a hard tackle, and they'll have to probably measure this one. Number one draft out of Miami. That's where Chuck Foreman came from. Huh? Or did he come? Yeah, he used to be in Minnesota. Yeah. I think he was. He was a great catcher and runner. Oh yeah, Vikings that's, a, that's another years. great example of the type of back that Minnesota goes for. They. They go for the guys that fit their system. You know, that sounds kind of strange. Everybody should go for the guy that fits their system, but that's not the way a lot of teams draft. They'll draft just good football players and alter their system around the players, but not in Minnesota. Well, Reich Allen, Lynn, and, and the people up in Minnesota, they really believe you. you've got to, those first two or three draft choices are important to you. They've got to be quality people that can play your system, you know? And play and contribute now. There he is. There's a guy in his office up in Minnesota. He doesn't have one bit of football memorabilia. He has a deer feeder outside, a couple of bass on the wall, and a picture of him when he played with the L.A. Lakers in basketball. Well, they, they, they show a picture on the psychology test. They send them a 35 different varieties of fish. If they can name 27 of them, they get to be drafted <laughs> early in the first round. Oh, that's not really true. I'm sure it is. Third down in inches. Short yardage with three tight ends in there. Oh, the quarterback tries it in... I don't believe he got anything. Lomax tried to go off the left side behind Louis Sharp. Steve, they're all motioning forward. Well, he must have crawled over. It looked like there was pretty strong penetration by the Minnesota line. I didn't know the helmet got you a first down. First down is Pat Haggerty. 
got the measurement done. A beautiful day, really, and uh, the kind of day you'd like to play football on because it's cool enough at about 50 or 52 to where you can get up a little bit of a heat underneath those pads. Y'all, yeah, this is enough. a great day for football. Crisp day. A first and 10 call at the 47 yard line. Quick drop and a throw almost up in the air. It hit off the hip of Pat Tilly and and Scott Studwell was wrapping him at the same time. See Pat, Pat Tilly getting up slow. You don't see him miss very many. Look, he wears gloves on a pretty day like this. And a big chaw. He usually has a chaw at the back end there. You're talking to him, he's spitting it by your shoulder all the time. It's a good read by Lomax. He intended to throw the green to the outside and sees a special coverage and fires it into Tilly. Throws a little bit behind him. Boy, he gets powdered. It hung him up, didn't he? Oh. Tilly goes back and says, what the heck could I do to you, Neil? He's on the sidelines now as second down and 10 comes up. Schumann is in there. Good pattern runner. Came from San Francisco. Throw out the flat. Marsh takes it on a one knee. Drives over for the first down to the 36-yard line. Tommy Hannon really hit him, but number 80 got it. I like it. This guy's got time to read. He's doing a good job of reading, but it's because of the pass protection up front. Just a straight zone out to Doug Marsh, and good extra effort on Marsh's part to get the first down. 14 to 7 lead. Minnesota needs to stop this drive if they want to keep the momentum on their side, and it's a good, good meticulous drive by St. Louis. Cardinals got that opening turnover and capitalized. For that first touchdown, the Vikings came back and got a touchdown, but second period right now belongs to St. Louis a little bit. Lomax with a lot of time going deep for Schumann, and Schumann has it. No, it's knocked away. Good play defensively by Rufus Bess, who just stayed with it long enough to get it out of Schumann's hands. Close call. On a great recovery. Any way to cover him is the way to cover him, and it looked like Schumann had him beat. But tenacity by that man right there, stripping, stripping, pulling the arms. Did he have the ball? Did he have the ball for a second and strip him out? Let's see. Blitz by Minnesota, man-to-man -man coverage. Got to protect to the to the post. Always protect the post route. There's Schumann. Good clean play by Bess. Great play by Rufus Bess. He showed up with Minnesota and just said, "I want to play." Been with three teams. This is the third team he's been with. He isn't going to go anywhere now. Both teams have nine first downs. Anderson hit hard, but bucks inside the 35. Elshire there. Mullaney was the starting defensive end and got hurt, so Elshire stepped in there. They are a deep ball club. A lot of depth. That's been the strength reason why they, they're 6-2 and two is because of their depth and their turnovers and their sack situation. But depth on defense and having Steve Dills coming in and doing such a good job at the quarterback. They've been whacked hard a couple of times. San Francisco took them apart on Monday night and Dallas sort of whipped them in the second half of their game. Yes. But they win the close ones. Third down and six. Lomax dumping and dropped by Schumann. Schumann was checking out the opponent and dropped the ball to 30. Well, they call him the show dog. The what? The show dog. I, all that hair coming out of his helmet. Oh, I wonder. I don't know why they call him that. The show dog. Huh? But he's going to, you know, I just don't understand why those receivers don't catch the ball when they come across the middle. They're going to get hit. And there's a story right there. Neil O'Donoghue. Everybody forgets that he beat Tampa Bay the week before. All we remember is that in overtime, he missed three of them. All the blue birds are out. This one is coming from the 42-yard line, so it'll be a 52-yard attempt. <laughs> what did he say? I learned a lot about who my friends were after last week's ball game. He's got a lot of friends right now. Wow, a 52-yarder. You better believe it, Irish. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. In a high-performance fighter, we go from the griddle to more than 20 degrees below in just seconds. Well, here's an all-weather fighter for your car.
the new Delco Freedom Dual Power Battery. Hot or cold, it's got the starting power you can depend on. With a Freedom Battery, you never need to add a drop of water. Get a Delco Freedom Battery for your car. Now from just $39.95. Call 800-AC-DELCO. Where'd you get this price? That's not the weekend rate you promised me. Of course it is, sir. No way. Would I lie? Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive, sir. Only National guarantees weekend rates. Just $19.95 a day or less for any car up to this old cutlass, guaranteed. And if we don't deliver, you'll get $50 off your next rental. We give you national attention, and that's the truth. Now, Donahue from 52. Now, he is two for two over 50 yards, and he's one of four between the 30 and 39. And O for one from 20-yard line in. Reaction. You know, he started off the what game is that? today. A little oh, that's, that's a little oh, <laughs> that's the Irish luck working for him. He kicks that extra point. The first extra point today was kicked and batted, and it still goes through. So maybe the luck's on his side today. Well, we'll go for eight or nine in a row. Here he is kicking off. He has not kicked deep because of Nelson. Jarvis Redwine. This one is handled by Huffman, who options again. Plus, ball gets out to the 25-yard line. The bodies pile up. That was Redwine getting the lateral from the lineman. We need to work with Huffman on drawing the drawing the tackle before he laddles out there on that option put. <laughs> That's right. Johnny Michaels was just telling me that they tried to talk Huffman into being a tight end, that he really has that kind oh, of speed. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's the reason why he's in there on that short yardage situation, number 56? That's it. 2.26 left before halftime. A good football game. We've seen a little bit of everything already. It's 17-7. Minnesota trailing St. Louis, but the long way to the wire in this game. Oh, good-looking fake by Dills. He gets the ball to Nelson. Good ball handling by the quarterback made the play look rather easy. Bob Harris chased Nelson out down there. Boy, and they do a good job with their faking, don't they, Brookie? Probably the best in the league. They run more play-action passes than anybody else in the league. Of course, Tommy Kramer uh, went down with, I understand, a tremendous injury, uh, one of the worst. Oh, did you I see heard. that on TV? Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. He claims he's going to be back, and he claims he'll be number one. But Olarch came in, and he said he wanted a new number. He had... Coleman's number eight in mine, or they did, and he said, no, I want to start over. New life. Would he get a dollar bill out and the, most, the numbers that were most on it as the number he became a... <laughs> Played liar's poker to get four, and Casper ended up with 44. Well, that was Casper's number in high school is the reason why he went with 44. Elsewhere now, the scores that are coming, Charlie, Tampa Bay 9-0 over Pittsburgh in the second quarter. Those are all field goals by Capice. Detroit 17, Chicago 3. Eddie Murray just kicked another field goal. Buffalo 20 to 7 over New Orleans. How about that? Woo. Buffalo's got a much better football team, I guess, than everybody thought. Baltimore leading Philadelphia. It's where wonders never cease. It's 17-7. Heavy Charge is taking charge. Are you tough enough to make it with the U.S. Army? Chevy trucks are. The Army contracted for 53,000 tough, full-size Chevy pickups and blazers. These rugged four-wheel drives are regular production vehicles powered by the proven 6.2-liter diesel V8. Need a truck as tough as the U.S. Army's? Just sign up at your Chevy dealers today. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Bartender's next big league pitcher. And loves to serve fire brewed strobes. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Look out. Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. From one beer lover to another strobes. <laughs> ain't room but for one mean reputation around here for six hours in november chief on cbs the girls are whooping it up at a st louis game they're happy of course the home team is leading and the crowd is happy as we mentioned earlier it is just a good football game 
final gun sounds, we'll all just go home and enjoy what we have in this country. M Minnesota's last victory over St. Louis was in 1974. That is a hex. White's in motion. Dill's getting rushed, but oh. the intercept. That's Perrin. Eddie Perrin came from the far side. And is up by the face mask. Gets inside the 35, and he'll get a penalty. And the Cardinals have used the turnover against Minnesota. The bearded one, Benny Perrin, is having a great season. He had a great uh, game-clinching interception against Tampa Bay. And, of course, last night, last week on Monday Night TV, he picks up a fumble and takes it in for a touchdown. He's the leader on the defensive team. It's amazing that a second-year guy can be in control of what's going on out there. But he's a hitter. He calls the calls the plays. And he's the guy they look to for, for help and, and courage. This is on Casper, I believe, number 44. Mr. Wild, face mask, number 68. First Number 68, I'm sorry. Somebody grabbed the face mask. That was Rouse, the big tackle. Boy, 305 pounds, if he grabs your face mask, uh, you might lose the face. Don't forget at halftime, Brent and Irv with scores and highlights. Irv Cross will do a Legends of the Game. <laughs> Number five, Paul Horning, the golden boy. Do they have enough time to cover? Do the they, Golden Boy? Do we have nerve enough to really do the Golden Boy story? Well, he's a colorful individual. Yeah, he's a great guy. He was some kind of a, a player. He fit right into the Lombardi system as, you know, he would beat bed checks and all that, but he was a tremendous player on Sunday. Did, did you say he would beat bed checks? Or oh, beat he, bed? he and Max McGee were our legends, certainly in our time, as to how to... I remember Lombardi fined him once, two or three times in a row, and finally Lombardi said, if you get fined again, I'm going to go out with you. It must, must be something great out there. <laughs> That's at halftime. Right now, we've got a minute 50, and the Cardinals are on the move. Anderson. Straightened up by Studwell, and then carries Studwell inside the 25. The flags are down again. Scott Studwell straightened up number 32, and then the big back put on the power and carried him over the line. Flags are down. Offensive holding. Mistake, mistake, mistake. It's a young offensive line for St. Louis with Tootie Robbins and Louis Sharp. Of course, Steve is a veteran. Of course, this fellow used to specialize in building gigantic offensive lines, didn't he, with the well, Cardinals? He had a great offensive line in the mid-70s. He went the whole season with, what, eight sacks? Jim Hart loved those guys. Illegal use of the hands, number 67, offense. Still first down. That's Louis Sharp. Both their tackles are only second year in the league. And, of course, Joe Bostic, their starting right guard and best offensive lineman, is out today. And Dan Audick, 61, is taking his place. So it's first down. And call it 20. Anderson's in motion. Morris checks out of the backfield and gets pain because of it. He's hit hard by Studwell at the 40 and taken to the 44. Good linebacker play. Timeout, St. Louis, number two. See Studwell making the, the defensive calls when the guy goes in motion. 55 right in the middle of your screen. And he sniffs this play out. Of course, he's leading the team in tackles. This is the reason why he's a sharp middle linebacker. Because they go from a three-man front to a four-man front very, very often. And he closes in on Morris right there. 17-7. With Chevette, the lowest price car made in America. Chevettes are so dependable, they've gone over 110 billion owner-proven miles. And over 97% of all Chevettes ever registered are still on the road. So don't think Chevette's the cheapest car made in America. Just the least expensive. Chevrolet. And you. Taking charge. When IBM personal computer owners look for good software, where can they turn? To IBM for programs that help you keep up with modern times. Business programs, entertainment, productivity, education, and more. The variety you want with the quality you expect in the growing library of IBM personal computer software. 
a well-balanced selection at a store near you. A minute and 37 seconds left before halftime. It's a 17-7 St. Louis lead over the Vikings. Vikings came in 6-2. and two. Cardinals are 2-5. And one or zero, whatever you want to call it. They've got one timeout left. The Cardinals have used two. Here comes the rush. Lomax dancing, being chased out of there by Duck White. The flags are down, and he unloads it in. Tilly gets hit hard again, ridden to the ground by Rufus Bess, who is just plaguing number 83. That was great coverage downfield by Minnesota on that play. Be a little holding, you suppose, maybe around the quarterback. Looked like they came with four down linemen and began to stir up things looking for Lomax. You mentioned that they go from a three-man front to a four-man front. They played a lot of nickel last week against Green Bay. Six and packs sometimes, huh? What do you call a dime? <laughs> Bowling, number 61, offense, second down. Ten defensive backs is a dime. Audic was detected for a holding. Obviously, Hannafin would like to choke. Well, they're, Haggerty right now. they're going backwards. This is the first time that they've gone backwards after a turnover. They've, they've cashed in on the two great field positions, 48 yards. And they've gone for a touchdown and 49 yards. They've got the ball and taken in for this time. They got it on the 29. They're, they're plus territory 29, and they're going backwards. A big quarterback, very agile, and a good runner. And, you know, he really hasn't been playing much. He's just getting experience, and he looks like he's going to be a dandy. Here he's moving to the pocket and rifles it across the middle. Caught. Across the middle, a great catch by Kenny Thompson. That ball was rifled in there. Boy, I tell you, that Neil Nomax, we keep talking about his poise. Look at the pressure he's under. Steps up in the pocket and throws a perfect pass to Thompson across the middle. Rufus Best, you'll see him coming. He's doubling. They got him doubled. Thompson, and he gets it in there. Moves it up. Do they have a shot for the first down now? Minnesota with 19 sacks, one of the best. Can't quite get to Lomax today. Lomax unloaded. That's a waste pitch. Nobody really in the area, so the quarterback exercised his right for life and limb. Well, that quarterback is reading blitz, and they see he throws his hands up. Well, what are you reading? The, the, the wide receiver is supposed to read blitz, too. And when you see blitz, you're supposed to go straight for the end of the end zone, and that's why he threw it up. O'Donohue now will come in and try to tack on a three-pointer. If this is too close, he will be worried. From 52, he's dangerous. From 30, I don't know. This is 29, so it'll be a 39-yard attempt. He is one for four between the 30 and 39. Perrin gets it down. Oh, he may go for the hat trick today. He's breathing again, folks. Got a lot of friends today. That was a line drive kick. That ball didn't get it about 14 feet off the ground the whole way. When he, when he missed the third one the other night, nobody would talk to him. I bet he went home with his own dog bit him. <laughs> He's popular. Let's see how light, low this ball's kick. Oh, he feels good. He's on today. Former soccer player and a rugby player from Dublin, Ireland. He's kicked well pretty pretty darn well everywhere he's been with Tampa Bay he was a good kicker and John McKay put him on the bus route to get him out of town and he's been here and he's been a good kicker really it's just that when he happened to have a bad night everybody saw I don't know I think some people went to sleep didn't they <laughs> they were playing you mean oh. four plays <laughs> for a 47 yard field goal they're calling it and a 20 to 7 lead. Credit poise by Lomax to rifle that ball in there. That's the reason why they got three points out of that series. That 20 to 7 still allows for a couple of touchdowns to put the Vikings over the top. So this game is far from over. O'Donohue now will kick off. He has not kicked a deep one yet. And he is putting a little wedge shot at the 28 yard line. It's taken by Ricky Young. And he gets out to the 37, where that good coverage team for the Cardinals racks him up. That, that strategy didn't work there. I think he was trying to just punch it over the line and short of the receiver, but you just don't want to give a, a team the ball on the 40-yard line. 
start a drive off. Especially a team that throws it a lot. There's Neil Lomax, number 15. He's taken over as the starter. 10 for 16 for 130. The one touchdown, of course. Pretty much in control against a very good defensive ball club. He's a confident young man. Steve Dills, his counterpart. Drilling out to Brown, who gets away from a tackler. Oh, and gets bent over backwards at the 44. Bob Harrison, Washington, ganged up on Teddy Brown. See number 48, Lionel Washington in there. He, he's a hitter, and that's the reason why he's in there. So they didn't like what Cedric Mack was doing on the outside. 20 seconds left. They've got three timeouts, but the Vikes have not used them yet. They will now. E.J. Jr. tackling Ted Brown. Vikes Time still have two timeouts Minnesota, left. Number one. Two timeouts left. And Dills, of course, a young backup, an understudy, really, of Tommy Kramer. There's Archie Manning sort of giving him some support. The other young quarterback, uh, that's Wilson. Oh, I like that quarterback I saw at Illinois on college ball yesterday. Did you see that? Uh, Trudeau was his name with Illinois? Well, they have. They always put out good quarterbacks there at Illinois. He's going to be a good-looking pro, uh, you know, if he's not already, right? <laughs> oh. Well, he throws it very well. So oh, I, I thought you were insinuating about recruiting yeah. tactics. No oh. way would I say anything like that. Steve Dills been very careful with the ball. He's had a, an interception so far today, two interceptions today, where he just didn't see the backside safety man that snuck in there. Yeah, snuck, snuck in there. But that's what he's been so well at this year is not throwing interceptions. Of course, he's, he's off today as far as interceptions are concerned. The ball is on the 46. 14 seconds left before the half. Dills pressure hits Sammy White at the 35-yard line. Benny Perrin was trailing him there. Sammy gets inside the 30 to the 29. Bikes are moving in a hurry. Yeah, Eight seconds left. Pretty impressive little drive here for a quarterback that doesn't have that much experience in a two-minute situation to get this close with eight seconds to go. They could get off one more play, call a timeout, and get another shot at it. It's Ricardo, their field goal kicker, is 17 of 19. So he's been pretty dependable. If they have to go for three. Benny Perrin was just chasing Sammy White on that play. He's isolated with Sammy White because Bob Harris blitzed the linebacker. And when you have one linebacker blitzing, somebody's going to be isolated out there one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I asked Merrill Swanson yesterday, the PR man, a very good one by my dad, maybe the best in the league from Minnesota, if Bud Grant had changed very much. We're looking at Hannafin and Floyd Peters and company. But... Uh, and he said, no, he really hasn't. He changes his style. He's very flexible about adjusting his coaching to fit the people that he has. But then he really hasn't changed. He's still you know, very loyal to his players. You know, and I think that shows in their personality, too. They're, yeah. He's very comfortable with what he is and what he's trying to get. And he really gets a lot out of his players. And of course, last year during the strike, he learned what he learned during the strike. That he wasn't going to be able to, re didn't want to retire yet. And he right. had some time off. And, you know, another thing that I thought was interesting when, review in the NFL season this year one of the quotes that Bud Grant said about what he accomplished last year in the 1982 season is, hey I got my team into this new stadium and adjusted well in this new stadium well that's having good vision about the overall team and where you are and feeling comfortable with yourself instead of saying hey we won more and we lost or we brought a new player in and we were overcoming these problems he says hey I brought my team in and got them used to this new stadium and started winning in this new stadium and started a trend in it so He's got a different way of coaching, and it's very successful. He wears well, doesn't he? He does. He's not going to get burned out, is he? No, gosh, no. He's killed a, he's one of the great goose hunters in the, <laughs> in the North Woods, that man. He can go out and let football go. Our first and ten now, one timeout left. Seven seconds left. Bill's throwing out of the pocket. Oh, Ted Brown is really nailed at the 21-yard line by Cedric Mack. Three seconds left. They're working on the nickel defense. Minnesota, number three. Going in the little crease and gets met by 47, Cedric Mack. And they said he wasn't much of a hitter. That was a pretty good lick right there. This will be a 36-yard attempt. Ricardo has hit seven of eight. It's 47, the... Cedric Mack, excuse me. That's okay. The, the, uh, 
He's seven of eight between the 30 and 39, Ricardo is. And he had bounced around a little bit before he found a home here. And even though he's a sideways kicker, he's sort of a straightaway sideway kicker. I don't well, know how to explain that. Well, he doesn't have that sharper angle when he comes in and kicks. He, you'll see when he lines up that he he doesn't walk back and then move back over to the left very far. He's just kind of, kind of just not, he's almost directly behind. He looks like he's a straight ahead kicker. Yeah, he's pretty much right behind Dills. The hole is down. Boy, that's dead solid straight. And he's very accurate, hitting 90%. I mean, up in a hurry, huh? What a way to get on the board. That's got to pump you up going into the dressing room, even if you're out of town. Remember, the Vikings are 4-0 on the road. They don't mind traveling as long as the food's good and the bed's soft. 20 to 10. We're only halfway there. Hannafin and Grant taking their charges in, get them all pumped up and try to get the game going. 39-yarder by Benny Ricardo right at the gun. We'll be back in just a moment. It's St. Louis 20, Minnesota 10. I think the Vikes got overconfident watching the Cardinals against the Giants on Monday night. Here are the scores now as we have them at the moment. The two teams that have not won a game may break through on this Sunday. The Buccaneers over the Steelers, 9-0 in the second quarter. And don't forget, Halloween is coming soon. And it was trick-or-treat for Cliff Stout. Watch the Buccaneers pressure right here. They are all over Stout. Walter Abercrombie in this sequence, he'll take a lick. He'll turn the ball over. And then when Stout was finally able to buy himself some time, rolling left for Chuck Knoll, Beasley Reese picked up on waivers by the Buccaneers, gets himself back there in position in the end zone. Even though he's shoved, he makes the interception. And that's why the Buccaneers are ahead on three field goals by Bill Capice right now. Houston, they haven't won 15 outings, and the Browns have suddenly tied them. Paul McDonald has led the Browns to their first touchdown of the game. It is 10-all. They are at the half. Buffalo over New Orleans, 20-7 to right now. Three touchdown passes by Joe Ferguson. Atlanta is shutting out New England, 17-0. Detroit is over Chicago, 17-3. Baltimore, with a field goal late in the second quarter, leads Philadelphia, 16-14. Dallas over the Giants right now. The update on that is 17-14. The Giants have struck back for their second touchdown of the game. Let's watch now to see how the Giants struck first. They went to their big tight end, Zeke Moat. There's Jeff Rutledge with plenty of time. Remember Todd Christensen on Sunday night of the Raiders. He burned him. This time it is Moat. Then it was Danny White. And he had Tony Hill all alone when the defensive back slipped, trying to follow him from the one. But then on a safety blitz by Terry Gennard, Danny White reading it beautifully, went to Tony Dorsett, and Dorsett scored from 15 yards out. But the Giants came right back. And here was Rutledge hitting Rob Carpenter. 15-yard score, 17-14 right now at the half in that game. And, of course, the game you're watching on CBS, the Cardinals leading to 2010. The NFL Today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. This is CBS. Certainly one of the most colorful players in the history of the NFL was Paul Horning, the golden boy from Notre Dame who went on to star for the Green Bay Packers during the Vince Lombardi era. Both during and after his playing career, Horning was known as a man who made all the right moves off the field as well. And when Irv Cross visited him in Louisville for this Legends of the Game profile, he discovered that the golden boy has not lost his golden touch. For Paul Horning, some things just never change. Hi. Why don't you take me to lunch? You got a deal. That's the best offer I've had today. Okay. Practice, practice, practice. Paul and his lovely wife, Angela, decided to take the rest of this day off. But most of the time, Paul Horning does his practicing right here in his office in Louisville, Kentucky, where he oversees his real estate interest in his holdings and a vegetable oil concern. He's a respectable businessman with a solid future. And he's a football player with a colorful past. He was the original golden boy, a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback at the University of Notre Dame, and the first player selected in the 1957 college draft. I guess in those days, more than anything, uh, Irv, it was uh, you know an honor to play professional football. I didn't care what I got paid. Or I wasn't really worried whether I got 
12, 5, or 15. And as it was back in 1957, I think I was the highest paid rookie ever. Uh, and got $15,000. In 1959, a rookie head coach named Vince Lombardi took over the Packers. And one of his very first moves was to install Paul Horning at halfback. He's got to be the greatest competitor uh, that I've ever coached. The tougher the game, the tougher he played. If Horning had great speed, he might very well go down in history as the greatest halfback of all time. He scored 176 points in one season, an NFL record that may never be broken. And so good were the Green Bay teams he played for that Horning placed a series of bets on the Packers and got caught. Uh, the toughest part, I called him because I, I knew it was going to, something could leak out quickly. And I wanted to talk to him on the phone and try to explain as best I could what I, did, what, what I was going to have to do and why. And I later got in touch with him, and uh, he was suspended for a year. I hadn't made a mistake, but I was never the same football player after that. His final seasons in Green Bay were difficult ones, but his final appearance in an NFL championship game with the Packers was a fitting conclusion to Paul Horning's colorful career. Takes the ball, hands off to Horning, sweeps to the left side, he's got the block, he's inside the 10, he's at the 5, cuts into the end zone for the touchdown. The Green Bay Packers are the National Football League champion for 1965. Paul Horning, he finished like the champion, a golden boy again. There are certain players, Irv, who seem to bring out the best in their teammates, and I always thought Paul Horning was one of those. Well, tremendous competitor, but you can imagine being the number one draft pick in the National Football League and earning $15,000. <laughs> <laughs> they pay that in taxes in one week now. Don't they? So. <laughs> now let's send you back to the game you're enjoying here on CBS. Score, St. Louis 20 to 10 at halftime here at Bush Stadium on a beautiful afternoon and a real good game. The the Vikings really haven't gotten much of a rushing game started. They only have 25 yards rushing. This is Tom Brookshire with Charlie Waters, and we'll have a couple of highlights if you want to. Want to show that that touchdown that St. Louis scored, uh, culminating in a real good drive, a 94-yard drive. Set up by a great interception by Lionel Washington, something that St. Louis haven't, hasn't done very much with this year. They've had it happen to them, but Lomax was looking left, one to go left, and had plenty of time. Good protection by the offensive line. Until he's in the end zone, waving and hollering and screaming. Lomax finds him for a touchdown. And then St. Louis, after a good field position, of, after a punt, went down and scored again and made it 14 to nothing. And this, and then Minnesota, after moving the ball 94 yards, culminates the drive with this power rush by Ted Brown, who's playing with a sprained ankle. Rather interesting stat was that the backs coming out of the backfield have caught 10 of the pass, 10 of the 16 passes, and the primary receivers these days uh, sometimes don't get the call. They're dumping off. Uh, this is the, the way we work up here. We've been trying to steal a hot dog like everybody else probably at <laughs> halftime. Some good games going on around the thing, and I'm sort of surprised that uh, that, that the Vikings haven't been able to rush the football, because uh, St. Louis is, we always thought they were sort of suspect uh, on the line of scrimmage against the run, but boy, they, they haven't been able to move the football on the ground. And they did so well last week yep. uh, against Green Bay, and that was one of the things that uh, St. Louis said that they needed to do was to stop the running game and four stills in the passing so that that pass rush could get after him, and that's what's happened. Dills has not thrown many interceptions this year, and they, he's come in, he's thrown two, and St. Louis has cashed in on both of them. And I still think it's sort of a jump ball. I think the field goal that the Vikings got just before halftime might have pumped them up. It's 20 to 10, and we're getting ready to start the second half. Starting pitchers are still in there. They're warming up on the sidelines. Neil Lomax, number 15 for the Cardinals, had a good first half. And Steve Dills on the far side will be going in there. Boy, today, to be a quarterback, you've got to be uh, some kind of a poised individual with a very quick read way of doing business, huh? Yeah, that would be able to take a look. 25 yards rushing. You can see that Minnesota has 68 for Anderson and the Cardinals. About even in passing, and those turnovers, as you mentioned, Charlie, that's about it, huh? That's the, that's the biggest difference. And St. Louis has been able to cash in on the turnovers and the good field position that they've had in, in the first half. But as you said, rookie, that halftime, going in at halftime with a, with a field goal with nothing left, no time left on the clock, boy, that's a, that's a good indication of what things could be coming in the second half. 
Randy Love is back to accept the kickoff, and Farrell, Ricardo, of course, with one field goal notch on his gun today, is going to kick it off. The weather is getting a little cooler, if I can say that the temperature has dropped a little bit. It's just about flat perfect for what we're going to watch here this afternoon. A short kick, bouncing at the 15-yard line, taken by Farrell. Farrell gets away from one tackler, now runs into a buzzsaw at about the 20 three-yard line. Willie Teal and a group of Vikes jumped him right there. Of course, they're specialty teams. I'm sorry, Bookie. They're specialty teams that are very important here at Minnesota, as we mentioned, that Bud Grant puts a lot of emphasis on it. And that's Joey Browner, their first-round draft choice. Having to earn his keep right here on the, on the specialty teams. Plays off a block and gets involved in the tackle. Good play. And he's a he's a big choice too, isn't he? Huh? Got a great yeah, number one number has, one has a great future here. Oh, that's expensive kick coverage. First and ten toss back to Anderson. Gets a good block on the outside and storms out for five yards. Flags are down. Elshire made the tackle. Well, he got a quick block on the outside. Maybe it was a cut back illegal block I'm not sure yeah usually when you can turn that outside like that it, that wide open there's usually an illegal cut or, or somebody holding at the end of the line of scrimmage it is against St. Louis Jim Hannafin uh, stabilized his troops in front by 10 points not too happy with this call by Pat Haggerty but Number 68, Terry Steve, for holding as Matt Haggerty's mic did not work. First down and 20. Ball's on the 14-yard line. Lomax is your quarterback. Draw play to Anderson. Anderson dancing outside. Is buried. Maybe made the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Dennis Johnson. Stacking things up there, he and Sinline. You know, to get to four Super Bowls, everybody else says, boy, they couldn't win the big one. You've got to win four NFC championships, NFC championships to get to four yeah. Super Bowls, huh? Yes, sir. I, I always feel good that you put your goals where you know, a team like this, their goal is probably to make it to the Super Bowl. Not to win the Super Bowl, just get to the Super Bowl. That You've accomplished quite a bit. You can't put in there to win your Super Bowl as your goal because it all boils down to just one game, and that one game is so fickle. And I think at times that Bud Grant did it with what I would call not an inferior team, but not the best team, you know. And he somehow got them all the way anyway. Sidearm throw off balance by Lomax. And Studwell buries the intended receiver, Greg LaFleur. Tight end wasn't maybe supposed to play. He had headaches all week this week. LaFleur did and went to see the doctor. I guess he got his head x-rayed or something. He's playing pretty well today. Yeah, that's good that he's in the lineup and you... <laughs> if they hadn't played and they, they go with a lot of too tight in attack here at St. Louis, they'd have to come in and put a tackle. Art Plunkett was their next in line to be the tight end. I, Minnesota seems to be reading and figuring out what St. Louis has done these first two plays of the second half. Minnesota's looking for turnover, too, on third down and 20. Lomax in the shotgun. He's got to be careful. The Vikes will be after him like a T-bone stick. Lomax throwing for the outside. Tilly, he makes the catch and steps out. The Vikings say so on that side of the field, but Tilly says, look, my friend's right there. Boy, he's a great receiver. He's <laughs> averaging over 50 passes a year, 50 catches a year since he's been at St. Louis. <laughs> of course, the retirement with Mel Gray puts him in the spotlight. Look at the poise that Lomax has in the pocket and gets hit just as he releases. Does he keep both feet in bounds? Oh, he get two down? He claimed he did. The amazing thing was that he had the first down by inches. By, yeah, he knew exactly where it was, huh? He's a very crafty little guy. Oh, he's cagey. He and Roy Green come out to the bottom of your screen. A big throw by Lomax under a lot of pressure. Anderson running weak side, spins back inside to the 40. Almost the 40. Let's call it the 39. Sin line stopping him there. The Vikings known for turnovers, taking the ball away from other people. 
So far, Lomax and the Cardinals have been stingy. They haven't had any fumbles and no interceptions. Zero, zero. It's just a reverse order of what the history, what history has showed us so far in the NFL for these two, two, these two teams. If things could happen wrong, Hannafin says, if two things can happen bad, we get the worst <laughs> we'll, one. We'll get both of them. <laughs> That's right. Both of them. Morris out over the 40 to the 41. Dennis Johnson wrestling him down there. Cardinals are going to sort of try to get a long drive going. And they've got a big, young offensive line. Clark is the new man playing center. And Sharp and Robbins. Of course, Steve is the veteran. Audic is starting his first game, as you mentioned. And Morris is going to come out. He's limping a little bit. He's been very durable, this man. Man they call JR because he's got so many businesses going in Dallas. <laughs> Randy Love and Anderson are in there. Love having a very, very good fourth quarter against the Giants on Monday night. This is Anderson behind Steve's block. Breaks out. Look out. Anderson's going to is he's pulled out from behind at the 14-yard line by Willie Teal. He ran through a couple of arm tackles, and then he put on the speed, and Teal barely caught him. Let's watch why an in run and why a great running back has so many great yards. You see both the guards will be pulling on this play to the outside. They open the hole up for him. Both Dan Audick and Terry Steve are pulling in poor tackling by the Minnesota Vikings, but boy, when you have a big train like that coming at you, you try to figure out some other way to tackle him besides hitting him in the mouth. And he'll run over you. Longest run of the year, a 43-yarder, a big block by Audick on Scott Studwell, sort of cleaned open that hole. Quick drop, Lomax, overthrowing off the hands of Marsh. The ball was catchable. Again, there was time to get the ball off. That big Minnesota pass rush hasn't developed yet. No, they, they, they haven't done anything, and they've run a lot of stunts. Minnesota's got a, a tendency to start using a lot of stunts in their pass situation, something that St. Louis is, is known for, but they have not. Well, I haven't. I can't remember him being sacked, but maybe once this game. The down four linemen, they're not in the 34 now. Mitchell and Love in there on offense. And four big Vikings are down and coming for Lomax on second down and 10. Green's in motion. The handoff away from it by Stump Mitchell. Mitchell cuts back inside to the 13-yard line. Duck White, number 72, in on that tackle. The Stumper man. Runs back kicks. Has never a fair caught a punt, I don't believe, in his life. Says, says fair catch and punts are, that's for sissies. <laughs> he had 100 yards rushing the other night. He has 200 yards a day so far this year and hasn't started. He's averaging 6.2 yards a carry for over 50 carries. Now, that, that that's something to reckon with. The shotgun on third and eight. Lomax. Being rushed and throws it to Tilly, who catches it at the nine-yard line. Turner was there, and I don't know how Tilly caught it. It'll be short of the first down and bring up a decision. A fourth down will... And Tilly throws his arms up in disgust because he realizes he's short of the first down. It's a pretty short distance for number 11. Yeah, that did. <laughs> what is he... From the 20 to 29, he's 2 for 3, and he's 1 for 4 inside the 40, and he's 0 for 1 inside the 20. This will be held at the 17, so it's 27-yard attempt. There's a fake inside shuttle play inside the 5-yard line. Dave Aaron's carried the ball like a fullback. Pretty good little lateral play by Perrin. A fake by... The Cardinals and it worked. Dave Aaron's got his sh shirt torn off, but that's a big movement of the sticks. Well, watch, watch the way Benny Perrin just tosses the ball up to the up back. Aaron's who's come across the field. Oh, I love it. That's great. That's great football. All the stops. When you're two, five, and one, you pull them all out. A good time to do it, too, because we're busy watching 
the Irishman get back his kicking groove. I like that. Hennepin showed me something with that call. Huh? First and goal. The Cardinals leading 20 to 10 with 9.01 left in the third. They want to add on to it. But the Vikings are tough late in this game. Lomax. Roy Green. won his fifth touchdown catch. We had movement in the backfield that lets Leon Neil Nomax knows what's going on. He knows that he's going to be single covered out there, Roy Green. And he catches this one. And O'Donoghue will certainly kick this one. Oh, Paris Hole is there. It's a little bit shabby, but O'Donoghue hits it. And we're in St. Louis and the hometown for a first down. Aaron's. It was fourth and three. You'll see Aaron's on the right-hand side of your screen. He's got his hands on his knees. The ball will be snapped back to, to Benny Perrin. He'll lateral the ball up. And Willie Teal, who's rushing the rushing the punter, thinks that he has no idea. Well, that's John Turner that runs right by. And actually, the Vikings, being a very good field goal blocking team, were really concentrating on burying the ball and got burned. Oh, I like it. Clever football. 65 yards and 11 plays, and this is the first deep kick down his head. And it's spiraling, taken it at the four-yard line by Redwine. Jarvis to the 24. Crowd now very much into the game. It's fun to play at home when you win. Pretty impressive drive by St. Louis to, to overcome that. That holding penalty and the move 80 yards down the field. Now Minnesota needs if they want to try to keep the keep the game tight. They need to have a good solid drive right here. The Vikings have to get a touchdown. There's Jim Hannaford. Team has won two games and they were both on the road in Philadelphia and down in Tampa. Sidearm throw by Dills finds Brewer. Brewer to the 35-yard line. Nice looking throw that time as Dills ad libbed a little bit. Had the guards pulling to the outside, going the other way, and Dills faked the handoff and then just reached up and threw a sidearm pass. He had pressure from Curtis Greer and he had to, had to improvise a little bit. Did you notice the uh, Mikey players aren't talking to the media very much? Did you notice that? I, I noticed that. When we would talk to them, they're looking out the window like, I hope nobody sees me talking to you. First down and 10. Handoff. Brown edging for the 40. Vikings have to get serious now. Bubba Baker in on the stop. Remember Bubba Baker and those kind of players are tough late. You better be ahead of them before that fourth quarter. Oh, yeah. He'll, he'll show up. You notice that this is Ted Brown. He's a single back. They've got two tight ends and two wide receivers on the outside and Ted Brown in there. Run the ball. That's a, that's a different formation. And we haven't seen that formation all day. And of course, one of those tight ends is Casper. The other is Brewer. And they're almost tackles. Casper in motion. And overthrown as Dills was dumped. Curtis Greer came around the horn. And I believe Galloway was close, too. Wayne Smith was a little upset. St. Louis cornerback. That was a poorly thrown ball. That was a, really the worst pass that he's had today. His stats look pretty good other than the two interceptions. Boy, coaches, just when you're talk, talking about interceptions and fumbles lost, they just break out in a rash. Toss back to Darren Nelson. Nelson spins to the 46 and gets dumped right out of bounds. Right at Hannafin's feet. I got about by room. Charlie Baker in on the stop. They've done a lot to bolster this Cardinal team on defense. They're a lot different looking club than they were a year ago or two years ago. They attack now from defense rather than sort of accept. You know? soft. They, they went from a, a three-man front back to a four-man front in the third game of the season last year. And now with Boyd Peters in here, they, they're doing extremely well on defense. And they stun a lot, which is supposed to be a gamble, but 
You got good people doing it. It works. First and ten call. Misdirection. Fake. A sack back to the 40-yard line. Curtis Greer. Search and destroy. Of course, you hear so much about Al Baker, you forget about Curtis Greer, who's the speed man. You'll see 51. Jim Huff trying to block him. He runs right by Huff. They're a strong defensive pass rush team. That's the eighth sack. Eighth sack for Curtis Greer this year. And the third sack for the Cardinals today. 6.50 left in the third period. Look at all that shift going on. Wow. Dills, the only one that could. I mean, he's rushed hard and almost blows the INT. Cedric Mack had a fleeting shot at it, and Curtis Greer came sort of under the pile. And I believe Al Baker also was in the quarterback's face. And all that shifting around, sometimes it might confuse the offensive team just as much as it confuses the defensive team. Well, you, the Cowboys, used, they were the ones that innovated the motion and that secondary shift and all that. We just try to ignore it when we were in practice. <laughs> ignore all that shifting. And Act like what they are. Yes, they're not really doing that. Who cares if they are? You're incorrigible. Third down and call it 16. Dills throws a bad pass as Curtis Greer got the quarterback's attention. He was looking for 75. Coming around the bend. Well, if he'd have just turned his head to the left, he'd have seen him. Because Curtis Greer turned that outside. And that backside. Here's the four Russian linemen. St. Louis, this is a straight bull power rush. You can see Greer coming around the outside, working on Steve Riley and beating him to the outside. Coleman into punt. Cardinal defense. Now remember, they are good on special teams. This is a good hang time kick. It's Farrell. Farrell goes up that sidelines. Out over the, to the 32 and uh, another good run back by Farrell. Make it Harold. Special team play. They claim it's 20% of the time is either a punt or a field goal attempt or something. Hannaford, of course, worrying about the penalty. The officials are together now uh, talking about what time their flight leaves. And what is the ruling? Haggerty will handle it. Number 40 there. He's the man in charge of this crew, and it's a good crew. Seven of them. Against the Vikes after the play. There it is. From the point of foul, didn't really move the ball very much, did it? No. Sure get a lot of penalties in these in the kicking game these days, Brookie, ever since they've made that all those new rules. They call it interfering with the return with man. The return huh? man, not, not giving him room to catch it. He still caught it. Caught it and ran like gangbusters. I don't know if it was Farrell or Harrell, but he took off. Bud Grant showing all of that emotion. <laughs> the good with the bad. Right now it's St. Louis 27, Minnesota 10, and that's bad. For dawn to dusk on a single tank full of fuel. Plus Cadillac roominess and comfort. Move up to a 1984 diesel-powered Cadillac. A Fleetwood Brome with range like this. Or a DeVille. An Eldorado. Or Seville. The diesel-powered Cadillacs. Whichever model you choose. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. Mike McCabe ran his first long-distance race. He didn't finish first, but he sure did finish. Looks like a stroll light night. Looks like a stroll light night. Looks like a stroll light night. When things are going right, looks like a stroll light night. Stroll light. A great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Hey, that's me, guys. Looks like a stroll light night when good times come along. 
It all starts with the NCAA today with Brent and our old buddy Eric Parsegian back there. And it's going to be someday. A coach will be worried about this one. Pittsburgh playing his old Notre Dame team. Or you'll see Florida against Georgia. 3.30 Eastern time. So check your local listings and see which game you're going to see in your area. We're really glad that CBS has NCAA football again. There's nothing like a real good college game. I think Gary Bender and Pat Hayden, I caught him yesterday, and it was a very good broadcast. Did you, you went to school. You went to Clemson, didn't you? <laughs> Roy Green to 35. Turner stuck him there. They run that little out route, that little stop route. They think that they see something that Minnesota's doing on defense, and there's no reason why the cornerback should be up there closing on that play that quickly. So that's a bad sign as far as what Neil Lomax is seeing, to throw that ball out there like that and throw it in a crowd. You were a quarterback in college? I hate to keep going back to your collegiate career. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a short while, a real short while. Your old coach told you you want to see some magic, huh? You're a quarterback. Yeah, he, he said, said, poof, you're a first-team quarterback. And that wasn't really a good one. That's magic, all right. Second down at eight. Marsh in motion. Lomax with a late draw. Anderson, pretty good defense, though. Doesn't pick up much. McNeil chased down the big back from behind. Well, that looked like it opened up. Yeah. Score, Houston 16-13 over Cleveland. Boy, would that be something if the Oilers could win. Baltimore, 19-14. That's in Philadelphia. That is not going to be a popular game there. Atlanta 24-0 over New England. The Giants in Dallas nodded at 17. Woo. Hello there. Tampa Bay 9-0 to pieces. Just kicking them right to glory. Third down at six. High snap, but Lomax handles it. Oh, ad lib. Anderson to the 45-yard line. I tell you, Neil Lomax looks like a quarterback today. Boy, he really is showing a lot of poise. Minnesota had good coverage downfield, and all of his men were covered. Lomax stepped up in the pocket and was thinking about running and decided to give it to somebody that's pretty used to running and he dumped it off to OJ. Other scores, Detroit laid it on the Chicago Bears. That's a, of course, a Central Division ball game. That these Vikings now lead that division by two full games. Buffalo, 20 to seven over New Orleans. The Saints will come back. They'll make that a close game before it's over. With. Illegal procedure. 416 left in the third. A lot of time left in this football game. Don't turn it off thinking it's over one way or another. The illegal motion, and of course, the Cardinals are saying they drew us offside. That's what Hannafin is saying. <laughs> you know, for a team that's 2 5 and 1, you'd think you'd see a lot more messy plays like this, and they have been extremely sharp. No penalties, not many people jumping off sides, very few penalties. And they were pretty happy warming up. You know, some losing teams, they look like losers. I saw Bubba Baker was sort of yelling, hey, let's have fun today and hit people. And, you well, know, the, well, he always yells, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's all the time talking. They're going to get Lomax for the illegal procedure. False start by the quarterback. i got to see that one. First down and 15 from the 40. Secondary comes up for the Vikings. Wow, Studwell took the numbers of Anderson and put him away and then helped him up. Well, that's one way of tackling that big man right there is to get him before he gets any steam going. Well, you know Studwell, you know where he came from, Illinois. You know whose tackling record he broke at Illinois? No, whose? Dick Butkus. Ooh. Pretty good name. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's genetics are good. Come out of you got to tackle people. Second down. And about 17. Motion man stays in the block. Lomax being chased, gets away. Oh, good pass. Anderson at the 48 yard line. Studwell making another tackle, but later. Lomax moving well in the pocket. Lomax making good decisions in the pocket, too. 
A lot of poise. He sets up in the pocket, reads the defense. Minnesota's in there. Patented zone defense. Throws it underneath the linebackers. And I like the way O.J. Anderson catches the ball and turns back up and gets about seven more yards. That a pure strength. Good blocking up front by 2D Robbins, too. They're trying to put some heat on the quarterback, but they're blocking pretty well. Lomax dancing, but sets it down. Roy Green overthrown, and the flags come down. The 22-yard line. Rufus Best was there, but he might have been on his back. Roy Green tried to jump for it and had somebody riding him. Rufus Bess has got Green man to man on the corner route. It's the slowest pass I've ever seen. Ball's got heat in a minute. There. Rufus Best hanging I, on. I couldn't tell whether he was hanging on or not. I could. I didn't. I don't know. He had Roy Green covered as far as the speed. He just might have misjudged the jump a little bit. It's a little high. The pass was. Anyway, it's a first and ten for the Cardinals. They're going for more. Inside handoff. There's Morris. Wayne Morris gallops to the 12-yard line. Big hole that time. And a clean one. Great blocking up front by Randy Clark, 64, the center. Terry Steve, 68, the guard. Look at that great hole. And 67, Louis Sharp. Great hole, great blocking by the offensive line of the St. Louis Cardinals and a good game by Wayne Morris. 500 and something carries without a, without a fumble. You're going to keep saying that. The poor guy's going to have one. No, today. that's just like saying the pitcher's got a no-hitter, huh? Is that it? That's what they say. Second down and inches. Anderson tackled hard at the 10-yard line by Studwell. They're having quite a duel. 55 and 32. It's first down. Studwell's the, the tackle leader. He had 20 tackles in, in the Cowboy game this year. How can you have 20 tackles? That's a whole career. I think that's what I had in like seven <laughs> and a half years. And Anderson, a big running back. That time he got up like shucks. That was a good enough hole. I should have maybe gotten more out of it. This Viking team has played very, very good football most of the time this year. Cardinals are giving them all they can handle. Pass play, overthrowing and out of the end zone. And intended for Roy Green. Anderson with 98 yards rushing. Pretty good start here with 110 left in the third period. Giants uh, are losing to Dallas because Cosby, a, a tight end that's pretty good size, had a 61-yard touchdown toss from Danny White. Is Cosby one of the best tight ends around right now? Yeah, he's so tough. He, he's, he's like a, a moving oak tree. You just can't knock him down. Six, a moving six. oak tree. Yes, huh? sir. He's tough. He likes to get hit, I understand, or hit you, huh? <laughs> Who likes to get hit? Oh, I always liked it. Maybe that's strange, but Anderson sweeping the left side. It's going to score a touchdown. <laughs> 108 yards rushing, a touchdown, and standing. How many times do you see the back stand on touchdowns close to that goal line? Wayne Morris went in motion, and he's in motion so he can get a good block to the outside. And watch this great block on 37 Willie Teal, and that's what makes that great running back so, uh, so much greater is that great block. And I tell you, Wayne Morris is a super blocker. Second touchdown rushing for Anderson. He's been hurt part of the year, but he's healthy. He's tough. Aaron's hole is good. O'Donoghue. Nothing to kick about today. 105 left in the third period. The Cardinals are running up the scoreboard. It's 34 to 10. First class. For you, it's a way of life. In everything you do, including the car you drive. Seville. 
Cadillac's finest. Elegant, distinctive, superbly crafted. Seville for 1984. A car for those who choose to go first class all the way. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. Do you have enough homeowner's insurance to keep up with building costs? Do you have enough auto liability to pay for a serious accident today? I'm Doyle Olson, a State Farm agent from St. Charles, Illinois. State Farm agents around the country are offering a free family insurance checkup. We'll show you how you stand on your auto, home, life, and health insurance and leave the decisions to you. If you have any questions on your family insurance, see a State Farm agent now. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Tuesday on the Mississippi. You are in deep trouble. Ben takes on his toughest case, defending a woman wanted by the FBI, and someone wants him dead. Yeah, but who? This is the touchdown that just occurred. O.J. Anderson, you'll see. 24 right there is Wayne Morris. He's gone in motion, and the two guards are pulling. Of course, that's Terry Steve that makes the first block. The reason why 24, Wayne Morris went in motion so he could get out there and block on Willie Teal it makes it a lot easier. Anderson just ran around uh, McNeil, didn't he? You know, and he runs like he's he runs like he weighs about 200. And he, and what he weighs? 228. He's got 108 yards for the day. And when he loads up, he weighs 220 something. Woo! O'Donohue kicking off. 34 points. San Francisco got 48 against the Vikings, and the Cowboys got 37. This is Red Wine being hit inside the 20. That's what those Cardinals like to do, make you start inside the 20. Jarvis Redwine, did he have some career at Nebraska? They've got one in there now that could play, but young man, what's his name, Rosier? 225 pounds that can run hard and fast. That may have been the last play of the third period, no. Okay, Jim Hannafin wants to check it out, too. It's 34 to 10, I know that. Might even be the third quarter. It's here, Cadillac Cimarron 84. This one's got the touch. Clean, crisp, fun to drive. With a feel for the road and that Cadillac touch. Everywhere you look, this one's got the touch. Cimarron. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. I thought Canon came up with personal cartridge copying just to simplify my business. Why else would they make maintenance as easy as changing a cartridge? But now, Canon's PC-10 and PC-20 are minding everyone's business. Even my dentist has one. He changes copy colors faster than you can say, ah, Canon's PC copiers. Now they're minding everyone's business. Hey, these are mine. Oh. We'll use gas. For information, call toll-free. Canon Personal Cartridge Copying. Plain and simple. Hometown St. Louis folks love it. The Cardinals who haven't done anything to speak of here at home are laying it on the Vikings. Dills throwing. Nelson gets away from tackler, but now the pursuit gets him. Good defensive play. Bubba Baker came back and Benny Perrin, and that was good hustling defense to keep Nelson from, from just taking off. Held him to five yards. Well, pardon me, make that uh, darn near a first down. <laughs> but Big no. Bubba got all the way back and chased down the fleet receiver. That's hustling. So he knows the camera's on him right there. So Nelson gets out there, and he's playing at the wide receiver position. Boy, he's an all-purpose type back, isn't he? He set an NCAA record at all-purpose yards in college. You mean running back punch, kickoffs, everything, everything Running huh? back punch, kickoffs, receiving, running. With the closing seconds of the third period, Dills throws it to Brown, who juggles if it keeps it. Teddy Brown breaks out, and then tries to ladle to Sammy White. Now the flags are down at midfield. Might have grabbed Brown by the face mask. Did I see his head get jerked around a little bit? I think they're going to call forward lateral. And, and he's going to act, he's act jumping up and down like he was a fumble. And I think that was a planned play. Looked like he tried to lateral it. <laughs> if it's an illegal 
lateral, the whole thing will come back. Load it. You lose it down. You lose down and uh, first down. It is a first down, so they're not going to. Let's see the call, man. Well, he hadn't really made a call. He didn't tell us what was happening here. He might have picked that flag up and put it away or, or eaten it. Of course, this is good poise by Dills to get it out there to Brown. And the ball's kind of stripped a little bit right there. <laughs> That's by right. Nelson, he laddles it to himself. Hey, that sub play. Bud Grant may put that in. That's the end of the third quarter. We now pause for this word from your local station. Wednesday, sultry, sensual. You've always been a little hungry for me, haven't you? Linda Carter is Rita Hayward, the love goddess. This is CBS. Brookshire and Waters for the fourth period. Have you ever been up in the arch over here in St. Louis? No, I, every time I came down here, Didi said, I didn't know, Didi Lewis said, I didn't know this was the home of McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> you and Didi, boy, it'd be some, some tour you could take people on. First and ten. The Vikings just at midfield. Dill's rolling out, being chased by Galloway, and Sammy White has it knocked away by Lionel Washington, who's playing very good secondary. Boy, he really has been playing well today, and he had a good game on Monday night. He's very aggressive. He's covering, he's covering that man well on that play. What kind of pads is Sammy White wearing? Those Looks like he's got little pads. kicker pads on. I don't believe he has real shoulder pads on. We're not talking about Big Bubba. He's got the the preponderous kind. He goes about 285. Yeah, this time like you look at Sammy White, number 85, check out his... Because he has real little... Look how little those pads are. Doesn't he look like he has pads on? It's like a Little League uniform. Good player. Second down and 10. Hill having many problems with this St. Louis defense today. Brown's in motion. Good blocking this time. Dill's going wide open. Number 84, Sam McCullough. Somebody blew an assignment. Sammy Le McCullough looked around like something must be wrong. I can't be this open. Everybody went to the corners and forgot him. Tom, I couldn't see what happened on the play. Maybe we can see on the end zone replay. But Dill sure saw it. Either somebody fell down or... Or just forgot to cover him. How can you forget to cover a guy? It's a wide receiver. He's I didn't it. see any red shirts on the turf. I think he just a missed assignment. First touchdown catch for McCullum this year. He's filling in, as we said, for the young receiver who had the bad, bad foot. A little action on the sidelines you could hear there. Ricardo kicks it straight ahead. And Jim Hannafin will have a few creases on his forehead. A lot of time left, 14.45, and it's 34 to 17. Bet you Sam's happy. I wasn't drafted till the seventh round. They don't even know my name. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Budweiser Light. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. Bring out your best. The best. Broder, huh? It has a taste all its own. Enjoy it. Budweiser Light. You're looking at the sidelines there behind Murdy's the coach is Sam McCullum, who has a golf glove on his left hand and not one on his right hand. Yeah, well, he, he uh, tore a ligament in his thumb in, in preseason, and, and he hadn't been able to play, and he's got a glove on his left hand. It's 
That's just the only glove that a Minnesota Viking player has ever been allowed to wear. They don't allow, they're not allowed to wear any gloves in any cold for any reason. Well, they're indoors now. They might as well relax and feel those restrictions. You know, it's not like Devil's Island, for God's sakes. <laughs> 35-yard line, the kickoff is Ricardo kicking deep. That's Farrell at the 25. Gets it to the 30-yard line. Not a bad way to start your drive. Rufus Best makes the tackle there. 14 and a half minutes left and 17 points from a tie. Minnesota's looking to make something happen right here in this series, either a fumble or, or an interception, something that they have absolutely nothing of today. They're, they're leading the league coming in the game with 19 interceptions. They haven't had any interceptions, and they're plus 17 in turnover ratio, and they have zero turnover. Don't forget, coming up next here on CBS, the Rams against the Dolphins. That's Robinson against Shula. Good game. Anderson falling to the 35. Offensive line has done some job of protecting the passer and opening up holes. Bill Friel tells me that that's O.J. Anderson's 25th 100-yard rushing day, and he hadn't been in the league very long. Season you know, number five, right? He hasn't. He's And he's averaging over 85 yards a game for every game he's played in the NFL. What do the people want him to do? Uh, what are they mad at him for doing? I have no idea. Well, Stunt Mitchell's doing great as a backup, but, I mean, you've got a great one that's in there. Second down and almost six. Handoff to Anderson, who looks to me like he's running pretty hard. Charlie Johnson hanging on there. He's short of the first down, Anderson is. And getting up a little slowly. The great expectation is that if he's a great runner, he's got to do it every game. I guess yeah. that's what people Well, might. when you hit a home run your first time up, you want to hit a home run every <laughs> time. You got the offensive lines doing a great job. The left side, 67, Louis Sharp, and 68, Terry Steve, and, of course, 64, Clark, Randy Clark. Just working that defensive line of Minnesota and grinding out those yards. Third and one. 13 minutes and eight seconds left. Morris for the first down. Turner making the tackle there. Short yardage defense is dangerous. Sometimes the guy can pop through and be gone. I look now at Bud Grant as the time begins to tick away and you realize what a man of all seasons he is because you will see absolutely no change in his demeanor on the sidelines and you know and i've seen his teams get blown out before at the first of the season i've seen him on national television getting blown out and and you say well the, well i mean you can count them out for the season and then they'll come back and they're in the playoffs and in the super bowl 12 playoffs 11 times they've won the central division since 68 that is some record here's love going to the outside Getting about five and a half yards. And the clock, of course, is being eaten alive by the men in red. Every, everybody in the stadium realizes what St. Louis is doing. They're going to run the ball and run the ball. So does Minnesota. They know it. The right side of the line this time we're featuring with Tootie Robbins and Dan Audick and Greg LaFleur, 89. Just pushing off the Vikings for... A five, six yard gain. And nothing fancy. Just stand everybody up and let's run at them. Second down and four. I can take the wind out of your sails too and they take that ball and stuff it right down your throat. Great handoff. Love goes back against the grain and follows the football. There's a fight for it. And that's what the Vikings were looking for. Let's see. I see the purple people pointing the other way and so are the officials. Now you'll see the worry on Hannafin's face a little bit. Let's see what's happening here. An official timeout. I don't see any flags on the field. Hannafin trying to bring his charges back. 11-22 left, 34-17. Back in 69, Subaru was pretty much alone in introducing front-wheel drive. 
in 75. With on-demand four-wheel drive, we were alone. And now with turbo traction, turbo plus on-demand four-wheel drive and automatic transmission, we're alone again. And we don't plan to be part of the crowd in the future either. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. One computer company has been shaping the way business does business for 99 years, NCR. Today, NCR high technology puts computer power where business needs it most. Computer power that helps shoppers check out faster as it controls a supermarket's inventory. Computer power to provide banking services 24 hours every day. NCR, shaping the way business does business. The 14th fumble lost by the Cardinals this year. You see Walker Lee Ashley, number 58. He's the linebacker that's the further, the deepest one. Watch him get hit, first of all, by Terry Steve. Come off this block and combine with and crash into Randy Love that calls the fumble and scrambles after it and recovers it himself. That's the type of thing Minnesota needs to get back in this ball game. That's the 14th fumble that Viking opponents have given up, too, which is rather an interesting fact. But that's what they look for. Now Dills has got to get the offense moving. Quick drop. Bad throw. Almost intercepted. It should have been. And that's two balls that have gone end over end that the young quarterback has tossed. Washington had a chance. I think it was thrown too badly to intercept. He's, he's rubbing his fingers like... Maybe it slipped or something. I don't think it was tipped, but that defensive back, Lionel Washington, he wears gloves, and he dropped it. Dallas 31 to 20 over the Giants now. Looks like the men in blue and white have it under control. They got scared again. As you said, they were in the right <laughs> position they want the trail. Tampa Bay could win their first. Four field goals by Capice. They win an award in Tampa Bay. There's the throw as Casper takes it. Somehow the ball found its way through there, but that wasn't thrown very sharply either. Well, he was under duress that time in his defense. That was a rolling pocket. Casper limps back to the huddle. This is when you really got to get a Bubba Baker and Greer and block them, don't you? Well, Greer is, Bubba Baker is supposed to be containing the outside. This is a moving pocket. It's playing this way, and he... Dills is under siege. He throws a nice pass right here. We haven't heard much from Casper. That is a real nice pass under pressure. Yeah, I didn't realize that he had been chased around. Curtis Greer was breathing right down his neck. The quarterback made a good toss, and the Vikings are on the move. There's still ten and a half minutes left. This is the best field position they had the whole ball game. A late draw by Brown, who gets away from Herrick, and Brown's going to get to the one yard. time left. E.J. Jr. stopping 23 as he was steaming toward the end zone. Well, they said he had a sprained ankle the first of the ball game, and they must have taped it back up because the old, they call him T-Bone. Boy, I like his attitude. Boy, he turns it upfield. Look at that blocking downfield right there by McCullum. I like that. Yep. Number 84. He stayed with him, didn't he? Boy, that's great running, though. Great siege. Remember now, it's there are 10 minutes and 20 seconds left. Should the Vikings score here, it would be 34-24. And suddenly the game could get very close because that ball is not round. It does bounce funny. It does bounce funny. You know, and it, it's a credit to the Minnesota brain trust over there not to panic. They keep their poise just like they keep their poise during poor outings and come back and make it to the playoffs. The same thing holds true in a game when they're behind. And, you know, that man is just, <laughs> he's cool. He led the league with the Eagles when he was a receiver. And he wanted, I think, a big contract, probably about $9,000. And they said, no way. And he said, good, I'll go to Canada. Remember, he went to Canada and started coaching and became just uh, what you know, he is, a legend. He started off, it was an interesting little thing, is that his first coaching assignment was straight to the head coaching position. Right, Winnipeg. You know, that that's unheard of. And he's been a head coach. He's a full-time head coach where you got somebody on the other side of the line of scrimmage, a Hannafin. He's been an assistant coach, an assistant coach, and now he's a head coach. Let's call it the two-yard line. A first and goal from the two. Three tight ends, including Huffman, and a pass play. 
Brewer takes the touchdown. And look out, the local fans are beginning to get restless. They call him Mr. TD. Bob Brewer going into the season this year, he had 15 catches and five of them for touchdowns, and here's his sixth touchdown. A little sneak back, huh? Yeah, a little sneakers. They always had, they've always had little tight ends that sneak around. I remember when Bob Tucker was here at Minnesota, he used to he'd block and boy, they'd block and then they'd sneak out into the flat. Sneakers. Ricardo kicking the extra point. And we got a football game. Nine minutes and 55 seconds. Vikings trail by 10, but suddenly they're upbeat. 34-24. Bigger engines were easy on oil, but today's smaller, higher revving engines are tougher. They can break down an oil's viscosity within 1,500 miles. That's why there's Castrol. Tests show Castrol suffers no significant breakdown of viscosity even after 5,000 miles. So use Castrol, because if you make things too hard on your engine, your engine could make things hard on you. Castrol, engineered for smaller cars. styling and perhaps the greatest luxury of all a sensible price the beautifully affordable gl 10s from subaru inexpensive and built to stay that way next sunday you'll see the dallas cowboys battle the philadelphia eagles or the chicago bears against the los angeles rams plus other regional action next sunday on cbs sports don't forget coming up next the los angeles rams with darth vader dickerson going against the Miami Dolphins or the Packers against the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, Dickerson can play, can he? Yeah, he, he looks like Darth Vader in that thing, but I tell you, he's a good guy to those L.A. Ram fans out there. Wow. John Robinson must be a heck of a coach. He's a good coach, good guy, too. You're going to hear a lot about him. He and Shula going head-to-head -head today. Ricardo kicking off. The Vikings, will he kick it deep or will he... Sort of a half onside drop kick, let's see, to the 20. Taken by Love. Love, who just fumbled before, is dragged back to the 11-yard line. Let's see who did it. Browner. You're right. That kid must have played football. Browner went down and manhandled a big, tough running back. Uh, he's a, they bring him in in the nickel defense from Minnesota, mainly as a blitzer because he's such a tough guy. Well, he is tough. Oh, there's a flag. What was it? Did they were down under it too fast. Uh, the, the referees, and we like to apologize, the fans are referees. Mike's not working. It must offside. be all sides. Oh. Number 47 on the kicking team. Number 47 on the kicking team is offside. Browner. That is Browner. Who makes the tackle. Wow, they just got to teach him the lines, what the markings mean. You'll be all right. Boy, Hannafin's breathing again. He's no longer talking to anybody upstairs with any headset. I mean, he's. He's working there. He is talking to Stump. Stump Mitchell. They're keeping Stump out of the lineup. You might be wondering why you see Randy Love in there, number 40, <laughs> instead of Stump. He needs Stump. an extension on that cord, doesn't he? <laughs> He's always like a... I said he choked himself, but, but Stump Mitchell's got a, uh, one of those astroturf toes, one of those hyperextended toes, and trying to keep him off the field if they don't need him. I tell you, you've got a greater hallux hurt, and that, that can really be a lot more painful than you think. Very painful. You know what the greater hallux is? That's no. That's the big toe. It is? Did you take any physiology at Clemson for guys' sake? Here we are, Atlanta shutting out New England 24-0 in the fourth quarter. Buffalo really banging New Orleans. Can you imagine that, that New Orleans defense being handled like that? Philadelphia finally on top of Baltimore 21-19. Love to interview Cush. You loved it. Today. <laughs> You'd like to interview Cush, wouldn't you? From the 30 now. That's right. Ricardo trying. Somebody's trying to fair catch it at the 31. You don't see a kickoff fair caught. That's Allerman making the play. Flags are down again. Is there a flag down again? I, I believe that was the kicking tee. We had someone say it was a flag. 
surely everybody knows that you can fair catch a, a kickoff, which is a wise decision in this case, because what, what's the only thing bad that can happen right here is the cause of football. Yeah. And the reason Allerman. why they're kicking it short is to, to a guy that's not used to carrying the ball. And Allerman's from Penn State. Probably went over that in classes there, you know, because yeah. Paterno always had those smart linebackers, right? First down and 10. A beautiful afternoon right here on the Mississippi River. We got a good game. The Cardinals must keep the ball now for a while. Anderson breaks out and slides to the 39. Nine and a half minutes left in the game. Sinline tripping him up. The Vikings again looking for a bobble, looking for a Cardinal mistake. See, Anderson was out of the lineup in the last series, and they put a Randy Love in there. Of course, Randy Love fumbled with a vicious hit, but it's good to see Otis Anderson back in the in the lineup instead of taking himself out of the game, thinking the game is on ice. The game is not on ice. I'm wondering how many people have had 120-some-odd yards rushing against the Vikings. I can't remember too many people over the years. Second down and four. Morris out in front. They may, he may have illegally jumped. Haggerty made the call. The illegal procedure. A mistake. There's still eight minutes and 53 seconds left. Take that. Force the ball into the air, perhaps. You're wanting Lomax to throw if you're playing defense now? Oh, sure. You want him to throw it downfield, but he's not going to throw any. Ball start. Number 61. Offense. Not going to throw any passes that are going to be even a chance for an interception. Baltimore on top of Philadelphia, 22-21. Now you can interview Q. A, a field goal by Allegra, yes. A toss back to Anderson. He is pulled down for a loss back at the 30-yard line. McNeil came across, made a good play, and the Cardinals just a little bit shaky right now. Well, that was an aggressive move by Fred McNeil. And yes, the Cardinals are they're going backwards. Hannafin just must worry about the turnover. The, the fumble, the missed snap, or a bad snap. Young center in there. You know, with a 14-point lead, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think. Want to throw a deep pass to Roy Green. Green gets the ball. Makes it to the 18-yard line, and a beautiful pass by Lomax. Swain, lucky to be able to make the tackle. Really nice pass and catch. Lofted that ball way up there. When they throw the ball deep to Roy Green, they, Lomax says, hey, all I try to do is throw it past him so nobody can catch it. And hopefully Roy Jetstream Green can run under it. 49-yard pass. His longest catch of the year. And a great throw. You realize Lomax is five or six yards deeper than that. So he threw that ball right around 50 yards. And I mean he hit him right on the hands. I like that all that air under it. Lost it way up instead of throwing that line drive pass on the deep pass. Green has some set of hands, too. Might miss it easy when once in a while, but you don't miss those tough ones. First and ten. Lomax intercepted in the end zone, and he's running it back out. That's John Swain. He's mugged at the five. And a flag is down. It's back near the line of scrimmage. It's going to be an, uh -oh, an unsportsmanlike, and they just threw the flag. They're coming from everywhere. There's a thousand flags on the field. Doug Martin threw one of the official's flags clear down to the other 40. He did. He, was, he didn't like the call. Walked over and picked the flag up and threw it 40 yards. And then the fl other flags rained on his head. You ever see so many flags come down in a minute? They all There's Haggerty now. Both teams... Obviously stating that the other has erred. Martin being restrained now. In fact, Holloway has him by the trousers to keep him from getting into more trouble. The interception. Aha. Uh -huh. Haggerty will 
explain. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 79, number 79 also on sportsmanlike conduct, first and goal. Doug Martin is the culprit in both cases. Of course, the interception by Swain is just what Minnesota needed, but it's for Nault, as Doug Martin is called both for roughing the passer and unsportsmanlike conduct when he tossed the flag 40 yards. They've been trying to get at Lomax all afternoon, and a good pass rush. It's been sort of nullified. I would imagine that they're all very frustrated up there. Toss back to Anderson. He's hit and hit hard at the six-yard line. The Mikes are mad, but that may not be enough today. It's 34-24 and seven minutes left. Crowd becoming very elated by the situation now. That was some kind of a penalty. That's about as big a walk-off as I've seen on one play in a long time. I don't think they even I don't even think they worried about going half the distance. They just kept on walking. They got closer to the goal line and kept on walking. And took the interception away, which I guess was even more important than the yardage. Very important. You know, those referees, they've got them hold control of that ball game when you question their authority that's when they're going to they're going to penalize you you should see the wish the, the people at home could have seen those flags raining on that guy you know what surprised me is they all liked you i took you then we went in the officials room <laughs> before the game and haggerty those guys said oh yeah charlie you must have been a pretty nice guy well, there was second. one guy a back judge that played right where the linebackers uh, stand up that i used to run into every week well on purpose so that you didn't get <laughs> thought you had an excuse you get him out of the way yeah mm, i got you yeah right <laughs> Second down and goal. The ball on the six. The game could be over if the, the Cardinals could push it in. That's what they're thinking. Here's the fake. Lomax going to run with it. He doesn't want to throw it. Yes, he does. Touchdown. Roy Green. Roy Green made the catch. His second touchdown reception. Neil Lomax, good-looking quarterback today. Really made good decisions throughout the day. And once again on this bootleg to the outside, you'll see he does have protection. The guards are pulling to the other way, but he has a Morris 24 out there in front of him to protect him. And he waits for the defensive man to commit and tosses a little shot put into the end zone for a touchdown to Roy Green. Good call, good idea. Defensive back, a former one making good. Here's Lodana, you kick it. It was a funny little skull shot. The knuckleball. You made it, huh? All kinds of plays here. It's 41-24, 6.27 left. Roy gets his second. Oh, no wonderful day like today. I defy any cloud to appear in the sky. Dare any raindrop to clock in my eye on a wonderful day like today. Subaru presents the only full line of on-demand four-wheel drive vehicles in America. So now, every day can be a wonderful day like today. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. This is the penalty that set up the touchdown that, that negated the interception. You'll see Doug Martin breaking through and hitting the quarterback. You know, that is really questionable whether that was uh, roughing the passer. Looked like he clubbed him in the head. If you hit it, if you hit that quarterback in the, in that, the yeah. face or head, you're in real trouble. Don't well, you he think? could, yeah, well, that, now that's, I can, I can understand. I'll buy that. But okay. he, he did deliver a blow just when he was throwing the ball. So, But not to the head. Can't hit him in the head. Six catches for Green for two touchdowns. 
the two-yard line. That's Darren Nelson. That's who you want to have the ball. Darren Nelson cutting back inside and pulled out by Curtis Greer, I believe. Our Stafford Mays, one of the big defensive linemen, made a lunge and pulled down Nelson as he was breaking out. It was Stafford Mays. What a play. Darren Nelson's mad at himself for not going all the way. All-purpose yards. Can do it all. He turns it up. Great blocking. A 50-yard return by Darren Nelson. He hasn't had a touchdown returning the kick yet this year, but I have a feeling every time he touches one that it's just there. 6.15 left, as you saw on the screen. Dills dumps it over. Ted Brown inside the 40 to the 37. E.J. Jr. called him there. A nail, perhaps, the last touchdown pass that Roy Green caught. That put the game almost beyond unless you strike quickly. No huddle. But Bikes are trying to. Dills outside. Brewer inside the 30. Lee Nelson making the tackle there. Cardinals begin to play a little soft again. Minnesota's going to a no huddle offense. Audible's at the line. That'll keep you from getting your nickel defense in there in time. Maybe won't it? Dills dumping it over to the 26 yard line. Ted Brown. Bob Harris making the tackle there. And they move the sticks. 5.20 left. No huddle this whole series. Boy, I like it. Inside draw play. Brown to the 23 yard line. Bob Harris making another tackle. Vikings, of course, protecting their timeouts. They still have their three, and they don't want to use any in that last drive. They may need that. Brewer tackled hard at the 23-yard line by Junior. And I mean Clint. They've gone this whole series without a huddle. Only way to win the ball game is to get a score up on there in a hurry, an onside kick, and that's the reason why they're doing it. Dell's back now, trying to get one, going across the middle. Brown is jumped, and now he's being sort of wrestled, and he is not happy. Harrison Nelson double teamed Ted Brown. He thought he was interfered with. Did you think he was? No, I didn't think so. Well, you haven't seen interference yet. You think every play's good, that secondary. <laughs> no, make. no. There is a flag down. <laughs> well, they did call something. They're calling something, and Haggerty's walking it in to the 11-yard line. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 54. First down. E.J. Jr. Got a little bit of the quarterback as he was throwing. Those linebackers like to eat quarterbacks. They just gobble them up. First and ten. You can make a first down without getting the touchdown. Brown on the outside. Ted Brown heading for the flag. Oh, he's knocked out at the five-yard line. Lionel Washington making a, a real good cut tackle. He's doing well today, Lionel Washington, starting in replace of Ray Griffin. Inst instead of going with Cedric Mack, they're the rookie that started the first of the year. They're going with Lionel Washington on this play, so let's see what happens. Second down and four. Dills, touchdown to Sammy White. Game's not over, folks. Well, they sure made that drive look easy, didn't they? That's right. Only call the huddle one time. We got a slight altercation at about the five-yard line. Remember, football players are just grown-up kids playing for a lot of money. Bubba Baker. That's right. That's about the first smile we saw on Bud Grant's face. That's when a football game is getting intense. It's an all-out blitz. You see 50 Bob Harris coming in. Dills reads it. One-on-one -on -one coverage right there. On Sammy White, Lee Nelson heading. Touchdown. Now Ricardo will try 
a very important extra point at this stage. Got it. Number one gets the big digit. We got a 10 point ball game and we got four minutes and 14 seconds. Can you sit on the football and steal the game? That's what St. Louis is thinking. Back in 69, Subaru was pretty much alone in introducing front wheel drive. In 75, with on-demand four-wheel drive, we were alone. And now with turbo traction, turbo plus on-demand four-wheel drive and automatic transmission, we're alone again. And we don't plan to be part of the crowd in the future either. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. I'm Eddie Muntz. I'm an arms dealer, and I'm going to make the deal of the century. Bienvenido. Take a couple of samples, take them home, see if you like them, let me know how many you need, okay? I don't want to be a part of that anymore, Ed. Where have all the good salesmen gone? Order forms are in the catalog, gentlemen. I hope we can do business together. Chevy Chase, Sigourney Weaver, and Gregory Hines are going to make the deal of the century. Hey, we're not out to stick it to anybody. Rated PG starts Friday, November 4th. Check newspapers. Last season, Pittsburgh was undefeated and number one until they met Notre Dame. Now the Panthers want revenge, plus other regional games. NCAA football next Saturday on CBS Sports. I know I don't have to tell you people, but don't forget, next Sunday, the NFL Today starts it off from a studio in New York. They get us ready, and then the games. Tampa Bay plays these Minnesota Vikings. The Cowboys against the Eagles. St. Louis against the Washington Redskins. And the Chicago Bears take on the Rams right here on CBS. So you check your local listings and make sure you catch a good game. Ricardo now is trying to instruct the troops as to where he's going to dump this ball. And the Cardinals are anticipating an onside. Roy Green's in there. Harold's in there. Probably the best hands on the team. I see Tilly up front here for the Cardinals. Randy Love. People with dexterity. They've got little guys on the front line, too, rookie, which is unusual. Ricardo, the tricky one, he's dumping it at about the 31. He only kicks it out of bounds, so the Vikings will get a chance to. Cedric Mack drifted out on beyond the boundary. They dropped some flags. He caught it before he went out of bounds, so it's five-yard penalty. It'll be re-kicked. He didn't know where he was either, huh? Look at this. This, I love the cat and mouse situation here with the kickoff because these little soccer type people can do those things, you know. Yeah, I mean, they can drop it anywhere out there they want to. Boy, this this town used to have a great kicker, Jimmy Bakker. Remember, of course, Freddie Cox was a great kicker with Minnesota too. Those were straight ahead guys, and Dan Meyer, the last straight ahead kicker, I guess in the whole world, is probably Mark Mosley. And this is the first soccer style kicker that uh, Grant has ever had on his team. Yeah, that was hard for Bud Grant to accept, I guess. <laughs> Coming up next, the Rams against the Miami Dolphins or maybe the Green Bay Packers against the Cincinnati Bengals, and you wonder which Packer team's going to show up. From week to week, they Boy, aren't they something up and down and up and down? I'm notified that this is the highest point total in this ever played in this series between the Vikings and the Cardinals. Yeah, they're going to try a conditional shift. onside. Ricardo, a good bouncy job, and is taken at the 45-yard line by Lionel Washington, and there is a fight for the football. And a lot of guys are shoving and holding, except the kick. Don't worry, nobody's going to get hurt, Mom. It shows you what kind of respect they have for Lionel Washington down here. They put him at the most crucial position on the onside kick is that man on the second row. Back there, his job is to catch the ball. Usually they have the front guys up there blocking them. Boy, oh, he's young, too. You know, they figure he can adjust to it. Baltimore beating Philadelphia 22-21. It's like the Eagles are on the rocks. These are final scores. Atlanta 24-13, New England getting two touchdowns late. Giants, 38 to 20, we trailing. Will nine seconds to the time. The Dallas Cowboys, nine add seconds. Nine seconds. Nine seconds to the clock. 
Tampa Bay 12, Pittsburgh 10 in the fourth period. Tampa Bay may win the first game. Of course, Minnesota goes down and plays Tampa Bay next week. 41 to 31. You can see that the number's on the clock. That is not the time of day. That is our time left. And everybody, of course, set their clocks back earlier. I was afraid I was going to miss the game or something. <laughs> I notice O'Donohue's over here warming up. The kicker for St. Louis is, is he anticipating something like that, huh? Yeah, he, well, he kicked a knuckleball the last time. <laughs> Ball at the 46-yard line. Clomax throwing. Tilly takes it and gets out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You know, that's amazing. It, it, as high a percentage pass that is, you still expect to see this team run the ball. That something crazy might happen. The ball might slip or bounce or something. A chance for an interception when you toss it out there. Does Tilly have any options on that play, do you think? No, I think it's unless the, the cornerback comes up and bumps him, then he goes deep. So I guess he does have an option. But I mean, he, you think he, I wonder if he might be able to turn it up if he saw quickly. Second down and almost four. The toss back to Anderson. He's had a big day rushing. Play does not add to his total. He loses a yard and a half as Doug Martin came across and tackled him along with Sinline. And of course, Martin is still breathing fire because they got him for roughing the passer. And then he threw the official's flag about 40 yards. What a nice javelin throw, though. He's a good player, too, boy. He's a big, good boy, pass. He really rusher, is he? a good player. He was an all pro last year. And then when he played defensively right in, and it's funny, they put him on what we call the strong side. and I think it's improved his play. You know? Yeah, you know, that, that backside, that's the strong side of the running formation and the backside of the passing formation. Good football team here. I think I understand that. Third down and five. Inside drive that bounces outside. Look out. Flags are down. Might be holding. Anderson came so close to popping outside and going down that sideline. Don't forget the doubleheader that follows You're right here on CBS. Rams and the Miami Dolphins. That's got that's a classic. Shula against Robinson. Holding number 63 offense. Holding on number 63. 2D Robbins. Big right tackle. That's Martin. He's trying to block there. As we said, Martin is still just a little bit angry. Maybe at himself. With that strong pass rush that Martin has, I'm surprised we haven't seen more holding calls called against St. Louis. This Tootie's doing a pretty good job, isn't he? Really has done a good job against the rush. Third down. And 15. Here's the shotgun. The blitz is on. Lomax fumbles the ball. The Vikings recover the football. Just under three minutes left. Browner came from the outside and stripped the quarterback. All out blitz. 55 Studwell coming into the middle. And that's 47 Joey Browner, the number one draft choice. We said they bring him in on the in the nickel situation to blitz him. And boy, he did a good job of blitzing there. And this is one thing you can't have if you're a St. Louis Cardinal is fumble the ball. And Studwell fell on the ball. And the Vikings are on the 42-yard line going in. The toss back to Browns, the reverse. Nelson is tackled back to the 45 by Elon Cruz. There's an alert football play by a defensive tackle. There he is on the right-hand side of your screen, 78, upfield. Sniffs the play out. We're back to live action now as Dills has hit McCollum on the far sidelines inside St. Louis territory to the 49. Hurry up formations now. Two minutes and 13 seconds left. Three timeouts remaining for Minnesota. Dills outside Sam McCollum. No catch. OB. And T.S. 
He was laying when he he was laying on the ground when he caught the ball. What does TS stand for? Out of bounds. Oh. Dallas guys have a funny code. Fourth down. This is the big play. It's 31 to 41 with 206. You might as well stand up at home too. Shotgun. could have run for the first down if he'd have put it away. I think so, but you know, the key issue is the pressure that they got on him. They've had pressure on him all day, and the St. Louis defensive backs have responded with interceptions. Pressure on here, Al Baker flushing him out of the pocket. Of course, Dills right here maybe could have run it for about 15 yards at the first, but he elects to throw deep into a crowd, and you'll see Benny Perrin go up and catch it high. 41-31, one fifty-three left. Don't go away. Anything can happen. Giving that extra effort makes winners. Be All You Can Be, sponsored by the U.S. Army. Miami's A.J. Dewey can play any defensive position asked of him, and he used that flexibility to intercept three passes against the Jets in the 1982 AFC Championship game. On, back to throw. It's intercepted by Dewey. He's going to take it in. By dominating the Jets almost single-handedly, A.J. Dewey was the best that he could be. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you never know. No! That's why getting into the Rangers is tough, and the training is tough. Be all that you can be. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only one. You can do it in the arms. Mrs. Hannaford probably told her husband, stop by and pick up a loaf of bread on your way home, you know? <laughs> but look at the concern. Oh, he's such a great guy. He's such a, a personable guy. It could be the third win of a tough year. Lomax got to keep the ball now. Inside handoff. Wayne Morris. Leg. And the time is being called by Minnesota. Flag is down. You know, both these coaches are what you classify as a player's coach. There's coaches in the league, and we've talked about this before, Brookie, that are uh -huh. players' coaches and coaches' coaches. Of course, Bud Grant is a great example of a, a player's coach who's been very, very successful. And there's not many players' coaches that are. Usually the... The coaches' coaches are the ones that are successful, the ones that stay aloof, <laughs> you know. But that have the long tenure, right? Yes. But Grant is gets a lot out of his players. That's Bud Grant. Holding, offense, decline, second down. Decline holding up. call. Timeout was. I think they still have a timeout. They may not have had to burn a timeout. Miami gets first blood against L.A., seven to nothing. Don't forget, that follows on the CBS doubleheader day. Marino just had a touchdown run of two yards for that Miami touchdown. Here's the outside handoff. Anderson picking his holes rather carefully now, not running with that reckless abandon that he did earlier. Hannon was there on the stop, 142 on the clock. He looks like he can just barely get timeout. up every time. Minnesota. Minnesota burns one of the three timeouts. They got a break on the time before because the uh, official was making a decision. Cincinnati leading Green Bay, 6-0. Pete Johnson with a one-yard run. And the extra point evidently was shanked. Don't forget, the Rams and the Dolphins or the Packers against the Cincinnati Bengals. Can you believe the Bengals were... In the Super Bowl only two years ago. Oh, I tell you, it's it's a strange league right now. 
there's about six teams that are really, really good, and then just all the rest of them fall back in the, in the pack. Well, how about this different schedules? I noticed that Minnesota will play four AFC teams, and all from the AFC East. They play Houston, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Cleveland. It's, I wonder who picks those and how they do it. Well, it's, it's, it's based on how your teams in your division did last year, and everybody in the same division will play the same common opponents, like all the teams in the, in the Central will, will yeah. play all the, the same teams. Now, well, and St. Well, Louis has got a horrible schedule. Oh, but I mean, you know, they were from the East. They were five and four. They play the toughest. All their combined winning records are all the teams they've played already, and they've got a tough schedule down the road. It just, you know, I always wondered how the commissioner's office handled that. Here's the toss back to Anderson. There was a movement, illegal movement on the offensive line by maybe Duck White, number 72, and Cardinals cheer that decision. There's Martin, 79, the big fella that <laughs> threw the flag 30 yards. <laughs> Defense, offside. Offsides. Maybe we'll get a close-up shot of number 79. Doug Martin. I wish we'd get a close-up shot. Let's see if we can. Because I just think he is still seething about that whole situation. <laughs> I've never seen a guy do that, to throw it that far. I've seen him throw helmets and arm pads and pick up a flag and toss it. There he is. Steam still coming out of his helmet. Oh, right he'll, there. he's still mad. He'll walk in the house and he gets back in Bloomington. He'll be a bear for about he's, two days. So why don't they put skirts on those quarterbacks? They don't let me hit them. <laughs> Come to wear a yellow shirt or something. And high heels, right? Here's Morris trying to get inside and he's buried. I never trusted quarterbacks either. You know, I mean, receivers was one thing. Dennis Johnson and Sinline in the on. tackle. Minnesota. Other Number scores. Two. Houston and Cleveland are now tied into overtime. It's 19 all. As Barr had a 30 yard field goal to tie that up with 49 seconds left. Houston may not win yet. Detroit 38 to 17, a final score. The Bears having many problems. Detroit's coming back to be a pretty respectable football team, huh? A couple of weeks ago, we, we got to see them, and they were really strong, and then they got killed last week, and then they come back. You, know, you hear a lot about defensive linemen and linebackers or their sports that they other sports that they did in college were wrestling and you get your wide receivers or they were they were long jumpers and, and, and your mm -hmm. running backs or were getting some experience in track. You know, most of those quarterbacks you see on their little bios is chess team. Shit, golf. Yeah. Surfing. Baseball. Well, you know, they're the they're more flamboyant, but you know, in a way, have you ever noticed that all the quarterbacks that I've ever known are good family men? Because they, they're, they're, they probably become a little shy because of so much attention or criticism or what have you, and they turn into their own family a lot. You know, I'm talking about Craig Mortons and people that I that I know are Jim Hart, great yep, family man. Yep. I'm running out of names very quickly on that. <laughs> oh, that fan. Not a very long list, was it? Second down and 10. Toss back to Anderson. Anderson over the top. At a 26-yard line. Holloway just getting a little bit of the running back. Look, you see the little toe, toes in his shoes are cut out on Time Anderson? Out. Minnesota, number three. You mean on Anderson's foot? Look, look at that. Look at that. What is that? This looks like moccasins. It, it looks like he's got a little... He's, you know what it is? He's cut holes out of his shoes so his toe can stick up so he can get better traction on this turf. Well, I'll be. I've never seen anything like that. Isn't that something? That looked like an old Mescalero Apache trick. <laughs> leave, leave no tracks. Cincinnati, 6 nothing over Green Bay. That's early first quarter action. Some of you will be watching that game. And, of course, a lot of you will be seeing the Los Angeles Rams battle Miami. Marino has already scored for the Dolphins. He's the rookie quarterback out of Pittsburgh. He's going to be a good one. He's as big as the darn tackle. And this is, he's the eighth, no, he's a tenth quarterback that has been replaced this year in the NFL out of 20, 28 teams. Where did you get that little piece of infinitum? Doing my homework. The tenth quarterback. The tenth quarterback that's been replaced. Going in the season, you have your starting quarterback, and then they've got 
now they've got 10 new ones in there that are, and of course, yeah, it's a positive thing for Miami. It's almost like coaches, huh? <laughs> O.J. Anderson has 136 yards on 24 carries. Looks like he is back and healthy. And of course, the Cardinals have a pretty tough schedule. They play the Super Bowl champions next week. I formation, third down and three, 121 left. And the Vikings are out. Uh-oh. You know who that is, don't you? That is Doug Martin sparring with the quarterback. <laughs> Look at Lomax thinks, what is wrong with that guy? <laughs> Why me? Encroachment, <laughs> number 79, defense. You should throw a flag for his intention <laughs> on that one. His old players are saying, okay, come on, Doug. Let's Encroachment, 79, first down. I didn't see anybody move. Oh. No, he, he held rolling. up. He keep, held yeah, up. But keep rolling. Oh, they didn't show it. He just was getting excited when he got near the quarterback again. He began to spar a little bit. Game is all but over. 121 left in a 10-point lead. That's going to be it. No more timeouts for Minnesota. Well, this is exciting. So the St. Louis Cardinals will win the third game of 1983. They'll be 3-5-1. And the Minnesota Vikings will be 6-3. The executive producer is Terry O'Neill. Senior producer is Charles H. Milton III, Red Eye from the Western Slope of Colorado. David Michaels, our producer just back from Hawaii. Looked great with that pineapple in his pocket. Andy Kendall, our director. Back from the injured reserve list, he has bad ribs right now. He's got hurt. All the people that make it, Danny Mann. Wilbur Almeyer and Suzanne Smith, of course, who gets us to the church on time. And all the people that make it so much fun. There's Deardorff talking to Blair. The losing coach looks much like the winning coach. But Grant does not change. He weathers the storm. This is Tom Brookshire for Charlie Waters. And we hope you enjoy the game. St. Louis 41 to 31 over Minnesota. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station. Now United flies to Tokyo for more top U.S. business centers.